Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. You're gonna get your minds to going real quick. We're gonna do a little bit. Some basic. This stuff here is gonna be basic, basic. I just wanna make sure y'all know what it is. Uh, just dealing with, uh, you know, what Torah is. Do we know which books are Torah, all that type of stuff, just in case people have no understanding, right? Uh, this is going to be maybe about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on y'all. Then we're going to have more. Uh, a slide kind of give us a little quick Torah portion on the Shabbat, and we're going to move on. All right, so what would we say? Let me get on this side, right? A little better. Now, my, my handwriting, listen, don't worry about that, okay? <laughs> don't worry about that. Just follow along. Worry about, don't get distracted. Okay, it might be like preschool up there, but say something, see what happens. <laughs> Shut this whole meeting down. <laughs> All right, so what, what would we say, um, just from historical perspective, uh, quantifies as scripture? Come on, y'all, what you got? That's true. That's good. Hallelujah. But historically, what what, what did what did our ancestors have? The Tanakh in the Torah. The Tanakh in the Torah. All right. So we'll go Torah. All right. Now, what does Torah mean? Law. Law. All right. But greater than that, what it equals to? Written expression of Yahusha, but what would that be? We got law. Like the covenant? Instruction of righteousness. Instructions of righteousness. That's what you call instructions of righteousness. When you teaching, the Torah equals the teaching of the Mosai. It's mindset, right? So we would say that equals teaching. We got that? The root word, anybody know the root word for Torah? Yara. Right? Yara means, anybody know what that means? Well, I guess you know the root word, man. I don't know what that means. <laughs> to, to what? To care. To care? You had a good C. Beginning with a C, to cast or to throw, as if you are throwing a arrow, you shooting the arrow, right? So the root word of Torah is to cast or throw in terms of what? Might have spelled that. Is that two R's in that? Yeah, mm -hmm. man, I'm not gonna have me up here looking crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if I throw an arrow, I'm shooting an arrow at what? A target. A target. Mm -hmm. So to follow the Torah, this means to follow the law, which means to follow the teachings, which means. I'm casting an arrow and I'm hitting a mark. All right, so we know that our people were nomadic people, right? Just to give you more of an ancient understanding of it, right? So we was used to taking journeys. And if you look at a, a lot of the early things that's written in uh, the scriptures, you'll see that a lot of our journeys was to, all right, let me say it like this. Well, we had our uh, encampment or a place to be other than uh, Israel being in the wilderness. We would go on journeys to go to wells, right, to get what? Water. Water. Or, or back and forth into what? Pastures. Right, because we had animals. Right, chick? So you have your dwelling place where you would be, where you lay down, you go to sleep, and you would have to do your daily duties going to the pasture or going to get the water out of the what? Well. 
Alright. Now, from an ancient concept understanding, to walk, to understand the path that it takes to get to the well and the pasture would be actually hitting the mark. That means that my journey, I know what my journey is in order to get to this well, I know what my journey is to get to the pasture. Mm -hmm. Now, the way that you would understand that, uh, and really it's meeting or getting to your destination, right? The pathway to your destination. The true understanding of righteousness is having the right pathway to my destination. Now, the issue is this, and you won't understand this unless you like, okay, I, I say it like this. I'm a new person in the realm of hunting, right? Now, we got, we got a, an area where we hunt and stuff at. And I had a teacher. Now, it were certain landmarks that the person had to show me how to get to my tent where I was hunting at. So what he would do, he would put little signals on trees and that I know, long as I get to one place, that's a landmark, and I know how to get to the next place. Mm -hmm. Now, it was sometimes, it was all good when we walked all through, when we walked together, because I'm like, <laughs> just walking, following him. But when he wasn't there, and I had to be paying attention to know, I got lost the first time. And I took myself off the journey, because I didn't recognize the landmarks. So, what it means to sin, that's an accidental sin, and then that's a sin on purpose. The accidental sin is to take yourself off the journey and you're actually lost. That means what? I can't get to my destination. You might have to call somebody, you might have to get some help to put you right back, right back on the what? Journey to the destination. But, well, let me just do sin real quick. Sin, root word for sin is what? Shata. It's what? Let me do it like this, because I can't, I can't do that word. C-H-A-T-A. Right? That's one of them. All that. All right, and that means to transgress or get off the journey in which I'm going to what? Miss the target and my arrow will send me down the wrong journey. Now, if I, the problem with true transgression is I know, I know the journey and I get lost on purpose creating my own path rather than the path that was what? Given to me. And that's why the scripture always talks about finding what old landmarks, understanding the, the understanding of the pathways of your father, so you can get right back on the right what pathway, right back on the right destination, so you can hit what your targets. We understand that. So we understand what teaching, what law, what, what Torah. Now let's give me real quick. Anybody else want to say something? Yeah, I'm gonna jump in there. All right, so. Um, so another way, I write it for you. okay. So another way we're looking at sin is so this is a difference between what the, what the scripture teaches and what we learned and growing up. Okay, we well, we grow, growing up we ask somebody what's sin and we'll say something that's bad, right? Something that's wrong, right? So according to the Torah, we look at the Yara and Chata. The idea is that the Torah is the instruction, and so the idea is the arrow, right? So let me ask you a question: the arrows turn. Like if somebody shoot an arrow around the corner, <laughs> right? How does the arrow shoot? Straight. Shoot straight. So the teaching is a straight teaching. It's straightforward. Everything is direct of what you should do and what you shouldn't do, right. right? And the idea is going to hit the mark. That's the target, right? And the target is righteousness, right? Right? Straightforward to what? Righteousness, right? So to miss, that's why people say, oh, I missed the mark. To miss the mark is right. to not follow the direction right. of the Torah. Right. right. So that's why John says, he says um, that sin is transgression of the law. So there is no sin outside of that. 
right? So it's not about what you think is righteous. Come on. It's about what the Torah directs is the straight path to righteousness. So, um, so this will get wild. So then you got these people that came under Torah, right? Because the whole world didn't get this Torah. Do we know that? So the Torah wasn't given to the Gentiles, right? Right. Ain't nowhere in the scripture where Yahuwah came to the, uh, with the Gentiles like, man, now I'm gonna give you all this Torah. The Torah was given to who? Yehudi, but eventually, I mean, at first it was for the whole nation. It was for who? What nation? Yashara. Yashara. Write that down right quick, Papachi. Yashara. Yeah, actually, Yashar. Yashar. People say Israel. Let's say Yashara, right? People say Yashara. People spell all kinds of different ways. So. But the idea is that this Torah, which is a teaching that was given to a certain people, Abraham's children. Let me let me back that up with scripture real quick. Psalms 147, somebody get that. Verse 19 through I'm gonna turn it right back over to you. Through twin, I just want to back up what you're saying. Let somebody read that. Read. Psalms 147, verse 19 and verse 20, just to back up what he said. All right, speak, speak loud here now. Yes, sir. There you go. <laughs> okay, um, Psalm 147, 19 and 20. Mm-hmm. Declare his word to Yaakov, his laws and his right rulings to Israel. He has not done so with any nation. Say it again. He has not done so with any nation. One more time. He has not done so with any nation. So he hasn't done it with any other nation. Hey, there's no other nation that this is given to. So I'm just going to give you the background for y'all didn't know. So that means that Europeans can't teach this. Right. Right. It is against the Torah for for Europeans and other nations to teach this thing. That's right. It is not given to them. That's why it says that um, the laws, the statutes, the commandments are given to us. Yashara, right? Because it's not given to them. Read it one more time. Both yeah. Okay. Declaring his word to Yaakov, his laws and his right rulings. His, right his rulings. laws and his right rulings. Yes, sir. Okay, get going. He has not done so with any nation, and they have not known right ruling. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, all right, so the context is that. So, because what the Torah is, is we're going to get to this. I, 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 I got you. I got you. The, the word covenant. Right. right? We're ready to go. We got to. Tie all this stuff together. We understand what sin and uh, righteousness is. Huh? All right, so covenant. So that word is um, berit. So berit. So somebody tell me what a uh, berit is. Yeah. Y'all know what berit is. Come on. It's an agreement cut in blood. It's an agreement cut in blood. So give me an example of a bereave. Give me, give me, give me any kind of practical experience. Marriage. So a marriage is a bereave between a man and a woman. It's a covenant cut by blood. I don't want to get... <laughs> Y'all understand, right? Because it ain't... It ain't Solidified until they come together. That's right. Consummation. That's, that's where it comes from. That's why it's cutting blood. That's where the blood comes. Right? So that water. And the water. Right? So the idea is that this Torah is given in the midst of this bari or this agreement that's cut in blood. So the Torah is what it is is the lack of a better term, it's the marriage contract. That's it. All right, you might want to write it down. Marriage contract. Hallelujah. Right, the simplest way to understand it. So, this Torah came with the marriage. Let's get a quick example of that, the blood, real quick. Go ahead. Exodus 24. Start at verse 3. So you can see that. Which y'all ended up. Start at verse 3. So. Moshe came and told the people all the words of Yahuwah and all the judgments. Told them the teachings, the Torah, mm-hmm. marriage contract, keep going. And all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words which Yahuwah has said, we will do. Mm, they ratified, keep going. 
And Moshe wrote all the words of Yahuwah. And he rose early in the boker in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and 12 pillars according to the 12 tribes of Yasharel. Then he sent young men of the children of Israel who offer burnt offerings and sacrifice shalom offerings of oxen to Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. And Moshe took half the blood That's and the put blood. it in basins. So you got and the Torah, half you got the, the blood. Covenant. You got the Torah, the teachings that they heard, you got the blood, mm -hmm. and you got the cutting of the uh, animals, and then you have the uh, contract, right? Let's keep going. And half the blood he sprinkled on the altar. Mm. Then he took the book of the covenant and read in the hearing of the people. And they said, all that Yahuwah has said, we will do and be obedient. That's what he did. And Moshe took the blood, huh? sprinkled it on the people. On the people. And said, this is the blood of the covenant, which Yahuwah has made with you, according to all these words. Concerning these words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just want to back up with you. Right, that's, that's it. So like... We're looking at this now. So we got this Torah, right? The Torah is tied to the Bari, the marriage, right? So the marriage comes. These are the terms of the marriage. It'd be just like a prenup, uh, you know, in modern day terms. In the Western culture, they have the thing called the Ketubah. In the, in, I mean, Eastern culture, I should say. And they have list out everything that's going to be concerning that marriage. It's all the stipulations concerning that marriage. So I'm saying this because we got to get this. So that means that this thing was not given to no other people. So... Let's look at this now. So that means that this is where it gets really interesting. Sin is uh, is what? What is sin? So who is the law given to? So that means that sin is not going to be applied to the Gentiles. Hear what I just told you? Sin ain't related to the Gentiles because sin is what? The transgression of the law, which means that, but see, this thing about this Torah, the Torah is not just about what you shouldn't do. It also has the blessings of the covenant, the blessings of what? Of the marriage or the bereavement. So also the blessings also don't apply to them. All right. Right. I know it's gonna sound wild, but it's it, 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 well, they don't believe that. Let's like, like, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Don't the wrong. <laughs> yeah, you gotta see what in the book gonna tell you. That. Let's go to Romans chapter nine. Right to Romans nine. <clears throat> start with verse one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, start with verse one. Listen, I'm back. Everything Chief is saying, we backing up. Let's go. I tell the truth in Mashiach. I am not lying. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Ruach HaKodesh. What is Shaul talking? That I have great sorrow and continual grief in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were a curse from Mashiach for my brethren, my countrymen, according to the flesh. See, we still looking for that gene. I ain't got that gene right there yet. Like, if it's between me and y'all, take me, you Don't block me out now. <laughs> Don't, don't make me a curse. Oh. But I, I, ain't, I ain't there yet. But Musha and Shaul like block my name out for them people. Now nah, I, I got I got some growing. To do. <laughs> Take me, you hood. You leave them all out there. Take me. <laughs> got for serving. Keep going. All right, here we go. Read that three again, and then let's listen to what this says. For I could wish that I myself were a curse from Mashiach for my brethren, my countrymen, according to the flesh. What that mean, according to the flesh? Bloodline. Bloodline. Key Rica, that's going to come up again. Now watch what pertaining to them. Who are Israel? Go ahead. So why did he have to say according to the flesh? Somebody tell me that. What about Shaul do we know? Why would he say, my, why would he have to designate that? Because he said he's too busy to preaching. He's preaching to the Gentiles. So where do you think Shaul was from? His Huh? Oh, his Romans. What was he from, though? Benjamin. He's Benjamin. Benjamin. He's Benjamin, but he was born in uh, Sicilia. He was born in Rome, in the Roman Empire. He's born in Turkey. But he says he's Roman. Right, it's because it was a Roman Empire. Oh, yeah, so he was right. born, yeah. born in the Roman Empire. He was born in Turkey. Okay. He's born in Tarsus. They call him Shaul of Tarsus. Right. Right? So when he talked... 
Y'all remember that? Have you read that? Shaul Tarsus? Right. So he's born in Turkey. So the idea was, and he said he's a Roman citizen because Rome controlled the area. Right. So he then he left from there. He went to school there and all that kind of stuff. He went to school with Herod. After that, he left and he went to Yehuda and he basically like lived the rest of his life in Yehuda. So that's why he's saying the journeyman according to my flesh. So he's, what he's saying is, he's saying it intentionally to try to gather all the people. He's, he's saying like, not just me, uh, Yehudi and Yehuda, but all the people concerning this covenant. Right. That's why he's adding that little thing, uh, um, my brethren concerning the flesh. That means not just the Yehuda, not just Yehuda, but everybody concerning this covenant that was cut. Everybody got me? Yes, sir. All right, keep going. Verse 4. Who are Israelites, to whom pertain the adoption. So the adoption, being adopted, pertains to who? To be adopted, to be what? Sons of the Lord? Right. It's, it's to the Israelites, what else? The glory, all the kabod, the former kabod, and the kabod to come. The covenants. The what? The covenants. The what? The covenants. The covenants were to who? That's what that's what Shaul was saying. What else? The giving of the Torah. And the giving of the Torah. That means uh, the teaching of the law and when you sin, the giving of the Torah was to them. The service of Elua. The priesthood. The yeah. services, the work in the office that's of right. the priesthood in the temple and the temple to come. And the promises. And the what? The promises. And the what? The promises. All the what? The promises. Hallelujah. Right. Don't miss this last part. Of whom, listen to this, of whom are the fathers and from whom, according to the flesh, Mashiach came. Man, say that them two verses again together. Hear what he said. Listen closely what he's saying. It's not two different verses. There. It's one statement. Yes, sir. Of whom are the fathers the and from are, whom? The whom are the what are the fathers? He's saying all the promises are concerning the promises. Now he's tying that, the promises to Mashiach. Listen. Of whom are the fathers and from whom, according to the flesh, Mashiach came. So Mashiach came specifically because of the promises consider, um, tied into the Torah. There ain't no New Testament. No such thing. Right? He's telling you of the fathers, Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, Abuja, all the going down, all the ancestors. When Mashiach came, his birth was specifically about this covenant. Yeah. So that's the reason why people say um, New, uh, New, New Testament or whatever, the word, if you go look it up in, in Hebrew, is Barit Hadashah. It means renewed covenant, not new covenant. All right? So I'm saying all this because we get to a point about Yasharal. So. This whole thing about the Torah, the Torah being a teaching. A teaching is a straight arrow where you're going to hit a target, right? So um, in the midst of that, and that teaching is only tied to what? The marriage, right? So this is where the, I'm trying to shift your understanding. So when the other nations, they're not, as, the only sin they can commit in the context of Yahuwah because they're not in Yahuwah. They don't have no inheritance with you. Can I kind of bring out one more scripture? Go, go ahead, go ahead. I, I got to back up the other thing he just said. Let's go to Acts. Go to Acts chapter 5. Starting at verse 30. He's talking about going to the flesh. Well, we can go a lot of places to show right. this. We can go back to Luke chapter right. 1. But I'm just going to give you one. We can go before he came. That was prophesied. In, uh, but let's, let's just go here. Uh, verse 30. Now go to verse 29. All right. Let's now watch. He came to get repentance. He came to get the promises. To and it's gonna say it right here. Let's go. Acts five verse twenty nine. But Peter and the other apostles answered and said, "We are to obey Alua rather than men. Uh -huh. The Alua of our fathers raised up Yahusha, mm -hmm. whom you murdered by hanging on a tree. Now watch this. Verse thirty one. Him Alua has exalted to his right hand to be prince and savior to give repentance to Israel. Oh, world. To give repentance to Israel. To everybody. To Israel. To who? Israel. To Israel. Who is it saying? To Israel. Israel. And forgiveness of what? And forgiveness of sin. Oh, let's stop right there. Let's stop right there. Let's stop right there. To do what? Read again. <laughs> And to, forgiveness of what? To give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. So what is sin? <laughs> Did the other nations have the Torah or the law? No. So they didn't have no sins to repent from. No. The thing is, they was cut off from Yahuwah from the very beginning. Yes. Right. Yahuwah didn't acknowledge them. That's true. That's why we go back to that scripture. He says he had to dealt with no other people, no other, people. No other nations. 
This is the Gentiles' blessing is tied into us. That's the reason why Yahuwah told Abraham, in you and your seed shall all other nations oh, be what? <laughs> be blessed. Because in the salvation of us is their salvation. Come on. This is how uh, this is the order. That, say that again. That might got by. They were looking at people coming in. In the salvation of us is their salvation. Because this is how you all did it now. You all got these Torahs that's concerning us and sin. But he also have these laws that's in general. The laws of the arrest. Reaping and sowing. Mm -hmm. Reaping and sowing. So how did you all going to judge the nations? If they don't got no Torah. He going to judge them by, by how they dealt with us. Yes. That's the Torah that can apply to them. Because that's the Torah of man. Going all the way back to um, Adam and um, Cain and Abel. But if, if a man shed blood by his blood, she be what? Shed. So because now the the, tor the, the covenant's concerning the father, Abraham, you're saying Yaakov don't apply to them. But now who have got them, dead the rights on the covenant made with Adam. By the shedding of blood. Come on. And then also the context of what he said about his people by them bringing them into captivity. That's how Yahuwah was going to judge all nations. Yahuwah wouldn't have been able to judge all nations if the people had been scattered there. That's right. <laughs> because the Gentiles had stayed into themselves, there have been a world all unto themselves. It's like the scripture said that Israel is what? A world unto itself. Because they have all, they have Ruach spirits that govern them. That's the reason why every Gentile nation got a God. Right, right. Different God that they serve. Right. Different commandments that they serve. Different co covenants, coaches that they serve. Mm -hmm. Right? But the context with us is everything concerning us is going back to this Torah. This is the reason why Christianity is destroying us. Yeah. It is. Because Christianity told us to not deal with this. That's all, and that's all we got. This is our remission from sin. That's it. Yeah. This is the sin that we sinned. Mm -hmm. And this is what he came to correct. Let, let, let me go. Go, 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 go. Let's go real quick. Luke, Luke chapter 1. The, the back up what he's saying. And Michael 5. I want, I want, we got to drive that home now. Y'all yeah. think we up here just talking. All right, Luke 1 verse. Let's go to verse 6 to 7. We got to see what, what Yahushua came for now. Hallelujah. Verse 6. Hallelujah. Then we're going to go to what was prophesied before he came. Oh, verse 67, okay. Yeah, Luke 1, verse 67. Luke 1, verse 67. Now his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Ruach HaKodesh and prophesied, saying... Now, this is what prophesied. Watch this. Blessed is Yahuwah Alua of Israel. Not of the whole world. Of who? Of Israel. He's the Alua of who? Israel. Go ahead. For he has visited and redeemed his people. So he done visited and he gonna redeem what? His Even. people. Verse 69. And has raised up a horn of salvation a for us. A horn of what? Salvation a for us. A horn of what? Salvation. salvation. Out of what house? In the house of his servant Dawi. Mm. Mm. As he spoke. No, nah, nah, you start right now. Right there. Hallelujah. Because that's where he came out of. He raised up a horn into salvation. Uh, out of his servant, who? Dawid. That we know that Yahushua is the son of who? No. No. Right? Now, let's go real quick. Let's get another. Let's go to a prophecy real quick. Just to back up what he's saying. Let's go to Micah 5. What verse? Let's we'll start at verse 2. Micah chapter 5, verse 2. But you, Bethlehem. Ephrathah, though you are little among the thousands of Yehuda, so can anything through come out of what? Nazareth. Keep going. Yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel. So Yehuda so loved the world, he gave his only begotten say. He said he's going to be a ruler where? In Israel. In Israel. He's going to be raised up as a prince and a savior where? And forgive the sins of who? Yes. Keep going. Whose goings forth are from of old, from everlasting. So whoever this is, you ain't going to be able to track their birth. Mm. <laughs> this is going to be from everlasting. Mm. Having no real beginning from in human terms okay. or no end, which makes him the olive and what? The time. That means he's outside of time. Hallelujah. So you can't quantify him in nothing. Hallelujah. That's right. 
Keep going, Jay. So we're looking at this now. Yeah, I know what you no, you, 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 you out. Yeah. <laughs> so again, Torah. So this we got to understand what this is. This all this stuff is connected with the Beret or the covenant. Right. And so this is the sin that we that when Yahushua came to um, save us from our sins, he was coming to save us from the violation of the Torah mm. and return us back to the worship of him. As long as we in violation of this Torah, we'll forever be destroyed. Yes. And again, so now we have I don't get to this too deep. But Christianity is a whole religion. That's the basis of it. The idea is you no longer need to do this. You no longer need to keep this. And that's the reason why it was the religion of our oppressors. Yes. Because in them teaching this, they will forever bring us into captivity. Yes. As long as we follow it, we will never be redeemed. Because we're in a constant, in a state, constant state of sin. So we ask ourselves, how come the oppressors live like the best lives right. and we're at the bottom? Because they don't, they're not committing sins concerning this covenant. The sins they're committing is concerning us. Right. And they understand that. So they know, just like the, what happened between Balak and, and Balaam, what happened? What, what, what was the difference? What did, what did he have to do so Israel to be cursed? Yeah. All right, so they had to, he had to get Israel to what? So first he had to understand, so they took that. Mm-hmm. Let's go to Psalms 83 real quick. Because when the nations realized that they couldn't curse Israel by raising up this, this prophet, this man to curse him. They say, man, we got to do this another way. We got to do something else. I go to Psalms 83. So now they, they going to study what our covenant is and make a confederate together. Psalms 83. Read that. Listen Psalm to 83, it now. verse 1. Do not keep silent, O Elua. Do not hold your shalom. Uh-huh. Don't do keep silent. Don't hold your shalom. Keep going. And do not be still, O Elua. For behold, your enemies make a tumult, mm. and those who hate you have lifted up their head. Mm. So they make a tumult. They make like a a, a, a gathering or a, a coming together or, or, or like the tear down the streets. I forgot which we would call it in our terms. Right. Right. Yeah. There you go. Keep going. They have taken crafty counsel against your people. Now they took crafty counsel. <laughs> So now they're sitting around seeing how they can be crafty with the people. Because they know if I keep these people under, we're going to stay in our salvation and we'll be able to do what we want to do. Right. Right. This is why every captivity, when every nation rose, who was there? Who was there? When every nation rose, they had to come get who? And put us in what? And now they became the greatest nation what? In the world. The fall of us. The fall of us. What? The salvation of the Gentiles. Man, we need to look at that word salvation. Yeah, we might. I don't know. We might have to be here a while. Read that. Well, verse well, three. They have taken crafty counsel against your people and consulted together against your sheltered ones. So these people then got together. Now we talking about reality. Now we ain't talking about no Christian church and spiritualizing everything. Right. We talking about what you can see, touch, and feel. These people got together, took crafty counsel against your hidden ones. That means we weren't lost. We were just what? Yeah. We ain't the lost tribes because we are the what? Hidden tribes. Mm-hmm. Keep going. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Ooh, that the name, Keep going. That the name of Israel may be remembered no more. Say what? That the what? That the name of Israel may be remembered no more. So let me, so let me, let me hear that. You think, but people know what Israel is. That's not what it's saying. It's saying that their name might not be known. That Israel's name might not be known as Israel. Mm. You understand? Like, if I, like, let's say if this is your name, like your name is a whatever name, and I say I don't want nobody to know you as that name no more. Right. Uh-huh. So what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna hide your identity, right. Come on, man. and I'm gonna cut you off that nobody knows that you're that person. Mm-hmm. You ever seen the movie the um the ant the man in the iron mask? Mm-hmm. That's basically what happened. You had this prince that's supposed to rule over everything. So what they did, they threw him in the dungeon. Yeah. They cut him off, make sure nobody know his name. So then that prince that would take over could remain in power. That's what's happening when we come into all these other religions and faiths. Come on. We go into chains and he put us in a dun- in a judgment on our basement. Because we can't benefit from the blessings of this marriage of Barith because we are in what? Violation of it. So going back to you hit the nail. Go, go. You, you finish go. Yeah, finish that. Yeah, go ahead. Verse 5. For they have consulted together with one consent. So they didn't got together and consulted with one what? Consent. They form a confederacy against you. Now they can form a confederacy. This is something they they all getting together against who? 
against you, against United, us. United Nations. United what? Yeah. <laughs> what for real? Like that ain't funny. This is the beginning of the United what? Nation. Why? They united against who? So we don't see ourselves as that significant. But they know. And they'd have done a doggone great job with us and our mentality. You see what I'm saying? Keep going. The tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites. So now we talking about a house, a tabernacle. This is the tabernacle of Edom. Because Yahuwah don't look at, he just don't look at individuals. He look at who you make a covenant with and he call you all one. So all these people is the house of Edom, the tabernacle that have made a covenant, made a confederacy with Edom. Even our people in this, uh, in this captivity. So now they have to what? Sports, entertainment, yep. all these things have to sell their what? To become a part of the house of Edom. Right. They doing it just to get some relief. Right. They doing it just to be the head and not the tail. Right. So they didn't join the wrong salvation and gonna get the wrong damnation. Because now when you make a covenant with Edom, all you who see is Edom now. Just like when Israel made a covenant back with Yahushua. He don't look at Israel no more. He look at Yahushua. So when he say you, he see the blood of Yahushua. And everybody that's joining him going to get the blessings of the reign of you. Right, right. Our salvation is coming. But if you mess around and join Edom, you're going to get what, what, what wasn't really prophesied and wasn't, wasn't supposed to be yours. And you allow the being provoked. Oh, I got to go now. Provoke the jealousy to make you sell your birthright right. mm -hmm. in order to have a salvation now. Mm -hmm. yeah. So so read them last, them first yeah. two nations. Do the first two nations. I'm going to show you here this. Read this again. The tents of Edom the and Edom. the Ishmaelites. The, the tents of Edom is the first two nations that's named. Now see, man. Mm -hmm. Want me to erase that? So you can... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Everybody right. got this? No, no, no. We'll leave that. We got one more thing to talk to. We got to get that right, right, right. I'm going to speed this up, though. All right, Tens of Edom time, time. and the Ishmaelites, all right? All right. So this is what y'all don't know about history because they don't teach you these things. Most people don't know that Christianity was founded by the Edomites. Mm -hmm. And if you go to historical documents, it was one point in time that Edomite and Christianity was the same term. They would see Christians and they would just call them Edomites. Mm. Wow. Right? So this says what? And then who? Edomite and who? And the Ishmaelites. The Ishmaelites. The Ishmaelites are the sons of Ishmael. Ish the sons of Ishmael are the ones who created Islam. Islam. Mm -hmm. Islam. Mm -hmm. so wood and stone. Wood and stone. That's what it says in Deuteronomy 28. So all the people, majority of black people in the world are in two different religions. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Majority of them, they rather what? Christianity or what? Islam. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites. Which what was created during the Confederacy. What? A crafty council that gave you religions to keep you separate. Yeah. Keep going. But you know, hold on, let me just say this real quick. This help you see that we ain't waiting on the deception to come. The deception was here before you was born. You was born into the deception. Now we ain't in the truth. We in the lie coming to the truth. We ain't in full light. We in darkness coming to the light. Come on, Yes. Yes, ma'am. Is it coincidence that Ishmael and Edom were both supposed to have the birth birthrights and didn't get it? And they're the ones that are. So, so it's funny how both of them have a doctrine in their religions that they replaced us. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this is my. I mean, if, if you sit down and think about it, this will fire you up. Right. Both of them, the basis of their religion is the replacement of us. Yeah. And, and Islam is like, it ain't, it ain't your sack no more. Now it's Ishmael. He's the true seed. Right. Right. And it's Christianity is spiritual Israel. Right. Yeah. Because what? Now we were done away with. Yeah. I'm telling you this right in front of your face. If you yeah. sit there, why? Like, man, why? Why all of a sudden? The church talking about spirit. What's it? Ain't no spiritual Germans. Ain't no spiritual Chinese. <laughs> Y'all notice that? Ain't nobody. But it's, but all of a sudden the Jews they spiritualize now. Everybody's a Jew. You can just you can um, follow religion. But well, go tell the Jewish people that though. Yeah, exactly. Go tell the Jewish people you can be a spiritual Jewish person. <laughs> They'll be like, no, you can convert. You can be converted, but you can't be one of us. They'll tell you that. Go in their synagogue. Go ahead. Yeah, it's stuff is wild, man. They, they, they. So then, uh, it's another one that says there's a controversy in Zion. There's another scripture that says that. It's a whole controversy that was based around that. How did it, like, like she just said, all these nations, all their wealth is because of you? 
all of Europe, they wealth is because of Africa. Mm. It's a constant raping of you. You are their source. You are their plug. They have to have you in a specific place for them to actually, and again, that's the definition of salvation. I want to get on it. Go, go ahead. <laughs> well done. We out there. Well done in there. Moab and the Hagarites, Gebal, Ammon, and Amalek, Philistia, with the inhabitants of Tyre. If you search all them nations, all of them got some type of thing that they felt like it was an injustice against them. Mm -hmm. That they didn't band together against us. Mm -hmm. yes. Assyria also has joined with them. Mm -hmm. They have helped the children of Lot. Deal with them as with Midian, as with Sisera, as with Jabin at the brook of Kishon, who perished at Endor, who became his refuse on the earth. Man, I'll stop right there. So I'm going to say this. Y'all probably going to take this the wrong way, but I'm just, it's the facts. All right, it says deal with them like um, uh, Sisera and, and, and Jabin, all these different ones. So if y'all read the scripture, what happened was it was wars that took place. And then with Yashra, Israel rose up and they took back their land, took back everything that they had. And then in the midst of it, um, destroy their enemies. So this is the thing. This is, and I ain't saying. Listen, I'm not promoting it like this. What I'm saying is, I want you to think about the mindset of this. Right. So what happens is that um, anytime you talk about retribution, anytime you talk about reparations, anytime you talk about all these things, these people, your oppressors, all of a sudden start. Nah, we need to do all that. You know, we can get over all this stuff. What we need is we just need peaceful protest. Right. right. Peaceful protest. We need to come out. You know, it's too much. People wilding out. We don't need to wild out. Just be calm. We can sit down and we can talk about these things because nothing is solved through violence. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, nothing is solved through violence. Hey, that's real, though. America went found it on violence. <laughs> After one took over by violence. All these other lands took over. Y'all didn't. Did y'all sit down? Hey, let's go. Let's talk and have a peaceful protest and talk about how we're gonna live in America now. Yeah. No, y'all brought blankets with diseases. Y'all brought swords. Y'all y'all massacred whole nations, white tribes. Y'all mm -hmm. took off Australia. The whole continent of Australia. The Tasmanians are like the minority. Man, yes. they almost completely obliterated them people, genocided them people. And they ain't gonna tell you to go sit down. Let's have a talk with me, learn violent. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm not telling y'all to be violent. What I'm trying to show you is the mindset of the oppressor where they like, hey, look, look, look. Hey, don't do nothing. Yeah, don't keep them laws either. You, you, you straight. Don't worry about, don't worry about them laws. Yeah, hey, 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 do it not with us. <laughs> you know, so anyway. So going back to that, that's the doctrine of Baal. Do we you gotta come off the person there? Uh, that was it, I think. All right, so that is out, because... Come on, man, we out here. All right? So, again, it's the doctrine of Baal. So, you know, the, not Baal, but Balaam. So, if you know the whole history of Balaam, like, like, like you just said, the idea was they knew they couldn't stop Joshua because they were so, as a nation, they had the blessing. Because of what? Covenant. Because of what? The covenant. The blessing was on them. Nothing happened to them. So another, the only way you can take these people down is to get them in violation of this covenant. So what he did was, um, if you know the whole story, they entrapped them. They put this, this is nation called Midian. That's why he said do them like they did Midian. Right. Because in Midian what happened was it was these people that was real salacious with their worship. Um, I would... If you go study it out, you'll find out that even the modern day concept of the strip club, they got that from their style of worship. Mm. Um, it, had, it was about women, they had these temple prostitutes, they had all this other stuff, they put it in front of the men, and then the men left off from following Yahuwah, and they went and they joined with these women, they, they went in the violation of the covenant, and after that, Yahuwah judged all of them. But then, and then Yahuwah had this man named Pentecost, who rose up with his javelin, going back to that violence, and while they was in the midst of having relations, Stuck the javelin through him and the woman. Right. Yes. Pinned him to the ground. Yes. And then after that, you you will say, he said, I'll make an everlasting covenant with that man. Gotta make it. <laughs> that was, that's what he said. That's what it's gonna say. Y'all be priest. You about to be priest now? You priest. You did that right there. You look like a priest. Right? And so anyway, so the idea is that they, they stop the iniquity, they turn from them. But that's the doctrine of Balaam is to teach you to be in violation uh, in, with, the, with the spirit that you serve or the most high. So Revelation 2 talks about this is going to be in the end last days. So Revelation 2, verse 13, he says, I know your works, and I know where the seat of Satan is. It says, and behold, you, there's some that hold fast my name and have not the whole, um, denied the faith. Even in those days when Antipas, my faithful martyr, who was um, slain amongst you, where Hasatan or the devil dwell. So if you know the whole story, Antipas was this person that was following Yahushua. He refused not. not bow down to Rome, they took him, they threw him inside. They, they say they put him inside of a bull and then boiled him alive. So anyway, verse 14 says, he says, but I got a few things against you. 
because you have them that have taught the doctrine of Balaam. Mm. Mm-hmm. Who we taught Balak, that's it, to cast a stumbling block before the children of Yasharal to eat things, sacrifice the idols, and commit fornication. Mm-hmm. So the idea is that um, the doctrine of Balaam, that's what they was doing, they was eating things, sacrifice the idols, and committing fornication. But the idea is that you, you turn from the path of the what? Of the what? The Torah that was established, but it means you're in violation of what? Because now, because you're in violation of this covenant, now you're what? Mr. Martin. Which is what? So you have to be right to the top. So now you got to be what? Straightened. So that you ever hear, um, you can only immerse some people say John the Baptist? Remember, he says what? He come to preach in the wilderness saying what? Make the path straight. So the idea is to have straight paths or to be straightened in the commandments that our Most High done gave us. So sad to say so, then you have these people that's formerly, um, we call Israel, and then the, the, the proper term is Yasharal. Right. So if you look at your Strong's Accordance, it'll say Yasharal uh, means to, to wrestle with Yahuwah, contend with him. But this is the thing, though. So that word Yashar doesn't always mean to wrestle and contend, depending on what usage it is. Right. The word Yashar also means to be straightened. Right. Upright. So the idea is the, he's the you know, upright paths of Allah or Yahuwah. So the so when you become Yasharal, by you being that, you're supposed to be, you're supposed to be what? Shot forth. Shot forth. Right. You're supposed to be the ones that, uh, that Pass, go forth. Throne, arrow, straight. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to be the head and what? Not the tail. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's our original place. That's what we're supposed to be. But because of sin, because we deny the Torah, because now we say we're Christians, because now we say we're Muslims, because now we say we Buddhists, because we do all these other things and deny them as uh, Yahushua, now we have to become the bottom because now we do what? Sin. And we miss the mark. You missed the mark. So that's why we have to turn back to the covenant. But there's only one media of the covenant. It's Mashiach Yahushua. You all follow me? Yes, so, um, so yeah, we're going to talk about salvation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go real quick into some stuff. Uh, let's go, to, uh, let's get the mindset of what it talks about. I know your works, right? It's talking about yeah, the thing on the tour. Okay. Yeah, come on, man. Get on, get on up here. So, um, also, what is the, uh, what do y'all, what do y'all, what is the title that y'all, uh, that y'all call, um, Yahushua and, and, and um, and Musha? Malek, what's another title? I heard a few people saying Chief. it. Chief. Chief and what else? Moray. Moray. So that's another part. That's another aspect of the root word of Torah is Moray. Mm. So Yara can also, it means to shoot forth, to cast, but it also comes from Yare, which means reign. Ah. And the word Moray means to reign as well. It's the same root word from Torah. So uh, y'all, y'all, when y'all call them Moray, y'all got to understand what y'all, I mean, y'all are literally saying that they are someone who casts or brings instructions and teachings based off of the Torah, based off of the covenant. So if someone is not teaching Torah, they are not truly a more. They are not truly a more. A more is uh, literally someone who, t- who teaches Torah. So just wanted to throw that part out there. Hallelujah. 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 Well, let's get into some of the stuff, the, the works of the, the enemy and different things of why he, he coming. Right? Let's go to, uh, real quick, uh, get from me, Malcolm 2 and 2, Zechariah 11 and 5, Joel chapter 3. Let's start with those. Now. Yes, sir. Go ahead. So, do y'all, anybody else need to write these definitions down before we erase it? Here go to erase it. And then Psalms 40. You gonna write for Okay, yeah, you do that for me. So, um, more men is gonna write. Um, is it better for y'all to see from here or over there? Probably better over there. Over there, so you write on that, everything that's written on the book, right over there. So we gonna, she gonna write this? Or yeah, she, okay. yeah, she thinks she gotta, you gotta write it down? Yes. More. All right, I'm gonna show. So yeah, so we gonna move from this, right? We talked about Torah, right? Right. right sin. We talked about sin. We gonna talk about covenants. So now we're gonna get into salvation. All right, that's so, right. Hey, I got you. Okay. You wanna go from uh, Romans 11? Yeah. yeah. You can go with Romans 11. I can write down the definition. Okay. All right, somebody. Uh, I tell you what, yeah, let's do that, and then we'll come back to uh, how they end up getting their salvation and stuff like that. So we'll go there first, and then we'll come back. Hold those scriptures. We'll come back to them. Let's go real quick. Get Romans eleven. All right, Romans eleven. 
Y'all following? Yes, we helping you? Yes, praise you, Husha, for the people that came in a little late, but praise you, Husha, for y'all making it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Salute to you. Praise you, Husha. Uh, you let them know when you want them to start reading to you. Oh, you can go ahead, sir. All right, Romans 11, verse 1. I say then, has Elua cast away his people? Certainly not. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Elua has, cast, Elua has not cast away his people whom he foreknew. Or do you not know what the scripture says of Elijah? How he pleads with the Lua against Israel, saying, Yahuwah, they have killed your prophets mm. and torn down your altars, and I alone am left, and they seek my life. But what does the divine response say to him? Mm. I have reserved for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. Even so then, at this present time, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then it is no longer of works. Otherwise, grace is no longer grace. But if it is of works, it is no longer grace. Otherwise, work is no longer work. What then? Israel has not obtained what it seeks, but the elect have obtained it. And the rest were blinded. Just as it is written, Elua has given them a ruach of stupor. Still eyes that they should not see and ears that they should not hear to this very day. And Dawood says, let their table become a snare and a trap, a stumbling block and a recompense to them. Mm. Let their eyes be darkened so that they do not see and bow down their back always. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fail? I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Certainly not. But through their fall, to provoke them to jealousy, salvation has come to the Gentiles. All right, stop right there. So the fall to provoke them to jealousy, salvation has come to where? Okay. The Gentiles. So let me ask y'all a question. So the reason why we're giving you these words is because when you start to look at, um, so this is one of the problems that we have in Christian, Christian circles or um, westernized thought. So we read the scripture, we know it's translated to English, right? So we see the word in English and we automatically assume based on the usage over here in America how that word is used. Right. Also, we don't realize that sometimes that translation is not a proper translation, right? right? And what I mean by that, I ain't talking about like um, the word has changed because this, this is the cool thing about the Bible. It's this thing called a concordance. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's cool because you know what? You can go look where the actual original word was written. Every word that's in the Bible, you can go look it up and find a concordance and show you in the actual the original script in Hebrew what word was actually used. Right? So when you do that, now you can know the function of a specific word. Because you don't know what that word means. You know what that word means based on what they told you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like for instance, we got all kind of words in the, in, the, in the English vernacular that don't mean what it means. But we say it and we know what it means. But if somebody else heard it, we would know what it means. Right. You know, for instance, like we can go outside, like for instance, Toronto. So I've been in Toronto a bunch because you know my family here, right? So shout out to my family. <laughs> Let's say, um, so before a while, you know, because of COVID and stuff, we hadn't been up here, right? So somebody come to me and they'd be like, hey, um, have you been in Toronto? I'm like, nah, I ain't been there in a minute. Mm -hmm. right. Take that phrase now. And you take it to somewhere in, um, that's cut off from the modern world. Right. And they say, he say, how long you been in Toronto? In a minute. You go there every minute of the day? <laughs> <laughs> Right, because the right. context of it in this culture, being like, how could and they be like, how could a minute mean a long time? It don't make any sense, dude. Right. So that's how a lot of stuff be Hebrew idioms in the right. scripture. Right. What it means something completely different than what we actually read in the context. So that's why we gotta get the, get the context right. of what the scripture means. And then also because we have people tell us what it means. We have people tell us what, what salvation means. We have people tell us what grace means. We tell us all these things. But the Hebrews they wrote it might not have had the same meaning of that word. Mm -hmm. 
And it's important, words are important, right? If I write you a letter and give you instructions how to build a car, you gotta know what them words mean to build it. Let's add this real quick. Quick, remember them. Jump right real quick. Mm. Real quick, analysis. How you study the scripture. It's gonna explain everything that he just said. Right? So, yeah, I you can reach out for that. No, 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 we'll keep it, but I write over here. All right, there's four analysis that you need to take to give you your best uh, chance to make sure that you're interpreting the scripture the right way. If you don't do this, you can come up with the wrong conclusions based on um, your culture and infusing it into the scriptures, right? So, when we understand the scripture, our focus needs to be I want to get in between Yahuwah's voice and the ear of he was talking to, understanding how they would have understand this. So it's gonna come with analysis. This is not in no particular order, right? So one of the uh, analysis that you need to do is a, uh, a contextual analysis. Yeah, let me make sure I spelled that right. Yeah. We know what it means. Contextual analysis. <laughs> Right, and, and the contextual analysis means that I need to understand the subject matter, right? What it's talking about, the context of it, right? I need to understand what the subject is. How do I find the subject matter? Sometimes it's from the pretext and the post-text. I got to go and read what was said before the scripture and after the scripture. Sometimes I got to go all the way back to the beginning of that particular book to make sure I understand what he was getting at. Sometimes I got to read all of it to understand. So we'll say contextual analysis and we'll add in there pretext, post-text. All right, because I get in there and it'll be talking about, especially with Shaul letters. Yeah. That's why a lot of folks mess up because they don't understand Shaul. And they be bringing their understanding in it, and then all of a sudden, people be calling Shaul a, a bastard or be calling him a, a, a apostate. And I know they don't know Torah. They have no understanding that you can, and your, your behind just woke up two, three years ago. <laughs> this man been, was raised in the culture, in the scriptures. That's like you interpreting a text message that I put uh, back in 2017, and you'll say, and you'll make a judgment off my text message. Trying to understand it. You don't know who I was talking to. You don't know why I was saying it. You don't know what prompted it. And you don't even really know the conclusion. Because right. we ain't got all the conclusions of when it got back to them, how they understood it. Right. Right. right? So contextual analysis. Another analysis that you got to do that's very important is a Hebrew word. That's big right now. You want to speak on it? Yeah. So because what you're going to do, we're going to show you how um, Christianity has literally just had people already backwards on certain of these words yeah. because they don't know what they mean. Right. Like they're just saying words that you hear in your normal context that you heard other people say and you think that's what it means. Right. Um, like say salvation is one of them. Um, grace is another one. Grace yeah. is the one that's getting butchered yeah. all over the place. Mm -hmm. And when you go look at the actual Hebrew understanding of what that word means versus what they teach in church. This is what you gotta remember. Remember also, this scriptural, this contextual analysis that we're doing, just like you said about the text that's given. The Bible is not a, it's not a book. Really, be honest, ain't no book like this. There's no book that's really written spiritually for everybody. Right. Like if you go and you um, read the Quran, the Quran is to is uh, to Muslims. Right. Right. If you go and and you read the Bhagavad it's dealing with Hindus. You understand what I'm saying? And it's written to a specific people that would deal with them scriptures. So it's the same thing with the Bible. So the Bible was all these books that was written that was just a people's history. Mm -hmm. So imagine it being like your family. Your family got like a, um, a photo album, and in the photo album they write about you know, different things that happened in their family. And they passed it down for, you know, 10 centuries. And then somebody will get your family uh, album and start printing it and put it all over the world and say that now they done people. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's the Bible. That's real. Big, I'm telling you, so you go look. Go look who it's written to. Every book is written to them. They don't write to no other people. <laughs> like the book of uh, Genesis on down, the whole Old Testament. Then you get the New Testament. I could, we got time. I could show you every one of them books was written to Hebrews. Yep. Right. Just because they, so there are people say, well, what about the book of Corinthians? Well, it was written to the Hebrews that was in Corinth. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And some people say, well, what they say? They call them Gentiles. Go look up the word Gentile. You know yep. the word study. The word is Hellenist. What the word Hellenist mean? It means converted Jew. Yep. 
you can tell me something. <laughs> so, Go ahead, all, these, all these books is written to us, and it was just our family's oral history, right? And so what happened is when Europeans got a hold to it, they started mass, mass producing it because the idea with the Edomites was they going to what? Insert themselves in the midst of this scripture. So anyway, so saying that to say, you got to look at it from that that family's point of view. What if that family that family got inside jokes? And they wrote those inside jokes within that, within that text. You got to know what them inside jokes are. If they got a certain relationship with another people, they might, for instance, that this family might have a beef with another family. You might not know what that, that family got beef with that family. But every time that family is mentioned, they mention them in a negative context, context, but you don't know what happened between that family. Right? Hold on one second. So when you're looking at the scriptures, that's how these books are actually written. It's like even the letters, Paul's letters. Y'all realize them letters weren't written to people, went to like the world. It's written to this one person at this one place. And they took those books and they gave them to everybody and said, oh, now you got to live by this book. Right. Right. So, so anyway, so going back to why, why what we're saying, what we're saying is so important about you knowing what these words actually mean. You got to know what these people are saying when they say these things, because if not, you're going to base off what your oppressor told you these things, these things actually mean. Right. Go, go ahead. Yeah. So the book of Hebrews written to Hebrews that are still living in Judea. Right. But then all the other ones is like written to Hebrews. To the scattered. scattered. You're looking at James. He says to the, to the, to the, the, the Yehudi scattered. scattered. That's what it says. The first verse. So we're talking about all these books, because the Torah relates to who? Us. We're the ones that are in sin. You're going to write to the people that's in sin that ain't in sin? Because Torah is what? The law. Sin is what? How do you get, why do you get, try to get people to repent that don't need to repent? <laughs> it's just common sense. But that's, but that's, so if you read the whole book based on the understanding of those words, you will understand what he's saying at that time. Yeah. But if you base it on what Christians told you, then you're going to look at, oh, we all, we all in sin. No, we ain't all in sin because sin is transgression of the law. What happened is that you are under a curse because y'all dealing with our people. And according to the, the first covenant that was made with um, Adam and Cain and Abel, there was a curse with the man who, sit, who spills innocent blood. And so y'all are the spillers of innocent blood, which means that Yahuwah is going to revenge himself upon you. And the only way you're going to get delivered is if you repent for what you did to us. Right. That's right. That's the, that's the message of repentance to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. The Gentiles got to know that they only got a couple things to know. One, that Yahuwah is the Lord. That's it. Right? The Lord means the most high. Right? Mm -hmm. Two, that Mashiach Yahushua is his son. Yeah, right? Right? Um, and three, that we the people. <laughs> Clean to Yashua. Clean to Yashua. That's it. If they know them things, they can be delivered from their calamity. Because all through the prophets, Joel, on down, Yahuwah done told, he said, I'm going to destroy the Gentiles. Yeah. For what they did to my people. Mm -hmm. And so we read Revelation. Revelation is Yahuwah getting revenge on the nations. That's the reason why he, you notice that he goes to every nation, but not, not Jerusalem in Revelation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's what I'm trying to get. So anyway, I don't want to get this whole thing. <laughs> I'm trying to get y'all to see the context. So it's two things for us. For us, we got to repent. We got to turn back to Yahushua. We got to go back to the covenant. We got to do all these things. We got to, got to, um, got to purge ourselves from any iniquity that might be within us. And that's, that's the pattern. What I mean by the pattern? This thing happened, all, this thing, all these things already happened multiple times. Yeah. When Musha or Moses was in Mizraim or Egypt, when he was in Egypt, what happened? Our people have forgotten who they are or who they were. Mm -hmm. Matter, like, that's the reason why people think that Moshe or Musha is a Hebrew name. It's not. It's an Egyptian name. Right? It means to be drawn out, but it's an Egyptian name. Because he, um, he was born in Mr. Egypt where everybody was just kind of doing their own thing. Yeah. And so when you would draw him out, this would draw, so it was prophetic, but they drove him out. He went to the mountain, and Yahuwah met with him. Yep. After Yahuwah met with him, he gave him the context of this covenant. When he sent him back, the idea was to tell the people to repent because what? They're not keeping this covenant. So he told, basically told them, um, we're going to bring we're gonna bring people out. We're going to go and worship on this mountain. Pharaoh didn't want to let them go. Everybody know that story, that part of the story. What people don't know is that if you go and look, the scripture says that there was a mixed multitude that left Egypt. Mm -hmm. Gentiles left Egypt with our people. Mm. Mm -hmm. And they said that they're going to serve a little with us. Right? But also, a lot of them nations had oppressed our people. So, you know, you would did. He put stipulation in there. They can't rule over you. They can't have no office. <laughs> amongst Israel, right? But they can come and they can serve me and rock in the truth. They can live amongst us. They can serve me, but they're not going to be over my people anymore. I know this might be hard for y'all to hear, but it's in the scripture. You go look it up. All the commandments. The reason why it says that you're not. Israelites are supposed to even elect somebody that's non-Israelite over them. That's right. That's right. 
for that reason, because when the Gentiles rule over us, they rule over us with rigor. That's right. Right? Mm -hmm. But the Gentiles do have a chance to worship Yahuwah according to the, to, to the Torah that he already set forth. Right. But sin, the transgression of the Torah is given to the ones that the Torah is made with. It's like, it's like you getting a divorce about somebody else's marital problems. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Can't put yourself in that. Like. You can't even put yourself like like uh, you having a bad issue. You and your wife having issues, and then somebody else is fine, and then they get a divorce because of your marital issues. Right. <laughs> that, you understand what I'm saying? So that's how the Torah works. The Torah is to our, us and our people. I don't have to go through that whole long explanation, but I want y'all to see how important these words are in the context of the people. Everything in Hebrew is based off the Hebrew culture. Right. Every word is based off the culture of the people. Right. Every word in Hebrew defines itself. Yes. Yes. In English, what you got to do is when you want to know some English, you got to pull out a uh, uh, dictionary. And it's going to have all kinds of different definitions depending on, you know, even year. You can get a Webster's of 1800s. It's going to read different than it does in 1920. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? That's how English is. Yeah. In Hebrew, every um, word in a, in, in a word, every letter in a word is a, is a pictograph yeah. that actually makes a sentence that defines the word. So the word never changes the meaning. That's right. That's it. Ever. From the first time they wrote it to now, it means the same thing. It means the same thing. And just to add on that by, by Paul, let me show you real quick, because going back to one of the analysis that we're going to get to. Go real quick. Let's look at Paul real quick. Galatians chapter 1, verse 15, 16. Because we always, it's always said that he preached to the, to the other nations. But you got to read and stay consistent with the scripture. Now, this is a whole teaching in itself, but I'm going to give you a little snippet. A few little scriptures. Galatians chapter 1, verse 15. Watch what it says and how it reads, and then know the history. All right, go, uh, start at uh, Galatians chapter 1, start at verse 15. But when it pleased the Lord, who separated me from my mother's womb. Now he's going to talk about his separation to do the work of you. And called me through his grace to reveal his son in me, uh -huh. that I might preach now, him. Now he said that I may preach him. Now watch what he said. Preach him where? Among the Gentiles. I did not immediately confer with flesh and blood. So he said, I'm going to preach him among the Gentiles, among the heathen. Notice how that wording. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Leviticus 26 and watch where we were scattered. He said, I ain't going to preach to them directly. He said, but I'm going among, mm -hmm. if you go back to Acts chapter 2, mm -hmm. all these nations came to uh, the, the celebrate what feast? Pentecost. Pentecost. All of them came from different nations, right? In order to celebrate that. Even Yahushua talks about he has some sheep that what? Not of this folk. And they were looking like, is he going to the Gentiles among the Gentiles? Yeah. <laughs> so as a people, just like we were considered Gentiles until we learned the way back to our book. Right. So if he would have came and preached, he would have came preached to us among the Gentile nation. But let's go to Leviticus 26. He said that I'm going to preach him among the heathen. Leviticus 26, verse 33. Now watch. Verse 33. I will scatter you among the Gentiles. I'm going to scatter you where? Among the nation. And do what? And draw out a sword after you. So Shaul is using the same connotation. We got scattered where? Among the nations, and he get his, his, his mandate to go where? Among the nations and preach who? The same places that we were scattered. Go real quick to Deuteronomy chapter 4, four verse 27. You got to hear what it's saying to know who he's teaching. He going among them to teach the word. Us, because we got what? Scattered where? Among the nations. Read that. Deuteronomy 4, verse 27. And Yahuwah will scatter you among the people. Among where? The peoples. Mm -hmm. And you will be left few in number among the nations. All right. So a minority. That's what it means. Yeah. You will be the minority amongst the other nations. But I'm coming among them to teach the minority that's there. Right. right? So it was, and it's a whole teaching with that to help you understand what Yahushua said. And you remember when in, uh, uh, Kepha. His mind said, I'm going to the circumcised. Y'all remember that? And that separation? And then uh, 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 Shaul said, well, I'm going to go to the uncircumcised. 
Well, they're still the Israelites, but they're not awakened to who they are. So the same wording that he spoke his mandate is was the same wording in which we were scattered to let you know who he was talking to. Now, did some other nations come in after that? Of course. Let's go real quick to prove that. Acts chapter 9, verse 15. And help you see, it was going to be some other nations when he teaching them, among them, that they was going to grab on and come to. Acts 9, verse 15, starting at verse 15. But Yahuwah said to him, Now watch who his ministry also going to be to say, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine, chosen vessel of mine, to bear my name before the Gentiles, before the Gentiles, kings, kings, and the children of and Israel. The children of Israel. That means he go among them, find the children of Israel, bring them in. But it's gonna be some nations, just like it's nations here, that we went among Canada. We had to call out to the Hebrews, and the nations came in also too to do what? Yeah. Clean go. Right. So this is the same thing, but what Christianity tells you is that, well, that old that covenant is over. It's about the nations now. We are in spiritual Israel. We all coming in too, because Paul was sent to us. He ain't say that. We went off our pastor's word rather than the what? Consistency of the scripture. Right. And that's the next analysis. I'll turn back over to you. Yeah, so, so go ahead. Yeah, go, 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 go ahead. Uh, just on a mixed multitude. Um, also, when uh, Misraim was led out of uh, Egypt, on, did, so when Misraim was led out of Egypt, there was a mixed multitude who came. I know a lot of us are like, well, that's the mixed multitude. That's the other nations. But to land back on what Malek was saying is how the nations were judged on how they treated Yasharel. Pharaoh ain't go out with them, did he? No. <laughs> that wasn't Pharaoh and them. Was it Pharaoh army that went out with them? <laughs> No, Yahuwah had gave a commandment for, the, for everyone, their neighbor, to give them their possessions, to right. give the Israelites their possessions, literally. If you read the, uh, the, uh, the passage, it was literally right after that. Then a mixed multitude came out mm. with the Israelites. Why am I bringing that up? Because it was the Yahuwah blessed those who, those Egyptians who gave the Israelites their possessions. Mm -hmm. And they were the ones who were blessed to come out wow. and be a part and be blessed from the covenant Yahuwah made with the Israelites. That was the mixed multitude. So that's just the land back. That that's how Yahuwah judged the nations on how they, how they treat them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's another thing. Just because you come out don't mean you're going to enter that land now. <laughs> Listen, a lot of us going to get saved out of this one because that salvation was number but obedience to a word. Mm -hmm. it, it didn't matter if that Israelite was righteous or unrighteous. Or unrighteous. Right. When they heard the word to get in there, <laughs> put, that, put that post over the door. <laughs> they got in there. And when they got with the rest of the time to go, because they were scared too. Right. They got scared at the end. We in here, we going with y'all. Right, right, right. But when they got to that wilderness, the real unrighteous Israelite came out and the unrighteous of the nation. This is why it says in Ezekiel chapter 20 that I'm going to bring you out and bring you into the bond of the covenant uh, and, and meet with you face to face but you're not going to enter I'm going to get, get all those that have transgressed against me and uh, rid you of the rebellion to pull you out and not all going to come into the land. You see what I'm saying? So this is why even, well that's a whole nother thing. Man. That's a whole nother thing. So much. That's a whole nother thing. So, that's a whole thing. But go ahead. So, no, so going back to this whole thing about so about the word Gentile and why you got to understand it, right? So you got two different types of Gentiles, mm -hmm. right? You got the bloodline Gentiles, and then you got our people who went to those lands and then absorbed that culture. Like for instance, right now we in America, right? So we know that I mean, I don't, they call us Black Americans, whatever that means. All right, so still trying to figure out what that is. But so we down here in America in this land. And so let's say we go to Africa. Mm -hmm. Right? So we go to Africa. Even though we could be, let's say we, we did our DNA. We did our DNA, we um, traced us back to the Togo Benin. Or uh, traced us back to Ghana or the Sierra Leone or something. So it, it, it's, a, it's a tribe in Sierra Leone, I think they call it the Judea tribe or something like that. Mm -hmm. So let's say you, you know you were Judea. Right? That's where you come from. Your people came from there. So you, you get on a uh, plane, fly like, man, I'm going to go into my heritage. You even got a land there that you can trace it back, some of from your ancestry. You go there, you go to the land, and people there, they say, who are you? And you're like, man, I'm so-and-so. Then you be like, you American. 
Yeah. Like, nah, I'm from this tribe. Like, no, you American. Right. Right. You gonna be American. It don't matter what you do. Mm-hmm. Even though you from that place, mm-hmm. you've been taken from that place. Now you in this other land. When you come back, they say that you what? And that's American. American. Man. It's like people in the Cari- uh, Caribbean saying they from foreign. Yep. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. You're not like so. This is what I'm trying to get you to see. So the context is that's who we were in these other lands. We got scattered, and then we became other nations. We even call Dang. ourselves that. You can go over and this is most people don't know this, but the Spartans. If you go back and read the book of Maccabees, the book of Maccabees will tell you that the Spartans were actually Israelites. They actually wrote letters to Israel. And they, they like three, the movie 300 was about Israelites. Mm. Right? But they went there, they completely adopted the culture, the language, everything. So then right. people got, um, they started calling them um, Hellenists, Hellenized. Hellenized mean to be like the Greeks. Speak like the Greeks, act like the Greeks, because a lot of them territories were taken over by who? Alexander the Greek. I say not the Greek because he wasn't great, he was a Greek. <laughs> right? Alexander the Greek. So Alexander the Greek went over there, they, they come, um, convert a lot of them, and a lot of them had different languages and stuff like that. But um, uh, it was spoke Greek. So then, that's the reason why Shaul was the perfect candidate to do what? Go minister to him, because he grew up in the Roman Empire. In the Roman Empire, all people also spoke what? Greek. So now he can go to those places. Well yeah. He's well equipped. You know, being in, in the Roman Empire, he also can speak these different languages. So now he can go to minister to his people that was in scattered in these places. But when those people came in, they called them Hellenists or Gentiles. Right? right? So uh, even when Israel was scattered and you would divorce them, uh, the, even the southern kingdom, they only knew them now as na- the other nations. Mm-hmm. They ain't consider them Israelites. Let's go real quick to, to John 7. I'm trying right yeah. to go. John 7, 33 to kind of prove that that this is what the thought is. And you're going to see that among the Gentiles again. And this is Yahushua himself. Read that. John 7, 33. Listen, y'all. Then Yahushua said to them, I shall be with you a little while longer. Huh? And then I go to him who sent me. Mm. You will seek me and not find me. And where I am, you cannot come. Now watch what the Yahudim thought. Then the Yahudim said among themselves, where does he intend to go? Where are you going? That we, that we ain't going, that we can't find him. That, that we, we can't be there. Because remember, they ain't supposed to fellowship with the nations at all no more. <laughs> this is why Kepha had that issue. When they bought him in, they was talking about eating at the table and keep it like, oh. Yeah. And then Shaul had to be like, hey, bro, we ain't doing that now. <laughs> because it was known among the Yahudim that because they got divorced and cut off, they're the nations. And you don't even sit down and eat with them. But they was like, well, where in the world is Yahushua going to go in which we can't find him? Mm-hmm. Read that. Before he said that, though, then Yahushua said, Yahushua said this up. He says, we're not going, he says, I'm not going in the way of the Gentiles. He told, I'm not going to minister to the Gentiles. <laughs> then they said this, so who was he going to talk to then? That's right. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Keep reading. Does he intend to go to the dispersion among the Greeks mm. and teach the Greeks? Mm. What is Read this? that again. Does he intend to go to the dispersion? So does he intend to go to those that, that have been dispersed? Mm. Among, among, among the nations and teach the nations? Now we'll read that and be like, what the heck that mean? But if we understand that the kingdom, those people were considered the other nations, this is why he can say, is he going to the dispersed among the nation and teach the nations in order to bring them in? To uh, more validify what we're talking about, who, who, who Shaul ministered to and where they were dispersed. Yes, so, so one of them is, uh, I'm giving, so one person that was, um, we've been in a Greek context, but wasn't Greek was um, Simon the Siren. Oh, that's right. Right? So it's wild, because when I was little, we used to watch, um, was it, uh, Greatest Story Ever Told? Yeah. My mom used to watch that movie, and she's like, that's a black man right there. See that? He was just carrying his cross. That's the aggravating part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They won't make that by black theology. No, 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 no. It's in bed and our man. Oh, man. That's the one thing that our whole family say. See? That's a black man. Help you who should pick up. That's why we go through stuff, because we got the help. <laughs> so y'all will come up with all that. Uh, and then we tell you, you we the people, we be like, oh, no, nah, that's no. black stuff. That's black theology. Oh, that's God. blackness. It's about the spirit. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that crazy? Wow. So 
this is the thing. So, like, the Catholics got a thing. Catholics make statues. They call them um, Simon the Black. The whole statues of this black man that helped Jesus, right? Simon the Cyrene, because he's a stranger. He's a Gentile. This black man is Simon the Cyrene. Yeah. So when you go st start studying the history of Simon Cyrene, you know what Simon Cyrene was? He was a Levi he's a Levite. Right. Mm -hmm. His whole family was priests. He was related to the high priest. That's right. So he had came up to Jerusalem from Libya to keep the feast. Because they were scattered also in Libya. Mm. Cyrene is the territory of Libya. Wow. And so if you go look in the book of Acts, say that's where they all came from. Say some came from Cyrene, mm -hmm. some came from Arabia, mm -hmm. some came, and they were called, they called them Arabians and, um, and, and Egyptians and all these other ones, but they actually was Hebrews. Like they call you American, mm -hmm. or they call you Jamaican, mm -hmm. or they call you Bayesian, right. or they call you, um, you know, from Suriname or whatever, whatever that's the place you say you're from. But you know, we all got the same genetics. Man, you can have the same, go look on uh, Ancestry.com or whatever, we related. Y'all get what I'm saying? Yeah. So this is what was going on with the Gentiles. So you had the true Gentile Gentiles. Come on, man. And then you had our people that was converted into the culture of these other nations. Right. And the Yehudi, because they're elitists. I ain't gonna lie. Yehudi's elitists, man. Yeah. That's just real. They were like, hey, y'all Greeks. Y'all ain't, no, ain't no Hebrews. <laughs> right. I don't know what y'all doing out here. You know what I'm saying? And, and we just didn't deal with it. And then, right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna give an example of that. Act 6 chapter. So imagine now, so Yahushua comes, Get it. the Shalakim or the apostles, they come, they preach the word in the first couple of chapters, you know, the, the day of Shavuot or Pentecost happens, they had 3,000 people join. You read that? 3,000 people on that day. Yeah. 3,000 people join. So where do you think these people are coming from? Think they all Yehudis or Jews? Nah, some of them are coming from other places. Some of them are Romans, some of them are Greeks, some of them are, uh, 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 what do they call Libyans and all this other stuff. So they all come together, and what happened is the scripture says they sold all their possessions. Yes. That's what it says. And they made all things common. And what happened was they had this thing they called the daily administration. Where they would go, they would take care of the widows, the fathers, and the orphans. Right. They had this big, they had this pot of money. They'd be like, all right, listen, we all out here doing the ministry, so we're gonna make sure everybody's taken care of. So what y'all need? Y'all need this need, we got this money for this. You got this need, we got this money for that. So what happened is they started distributing this stuff, and then that thing kicked in with the Yehudis, like, man, they, you know, they Greeks. <laughs> And the issue started happening. So <laughs> Acts 6, this is what happened. Acts 6, verse 1, it says, and in those days. Oh, go, 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 go. Now in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplying. Was multiplying. So now you well, just them got this whole group of people from these other nations come in and be amongst them. Alright, keep going. There arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists. Right? So again, so if you read in King James, you'll say Grecians. That word, it's the same word. Go back to Hellenists. It's the word they translate as Gentiles. Mm -hmm. So you had these Gentiles and they complaining. Right? Amongst who? Because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. So what happened is now, yeah, so the Yehudis are supposed to give them what they, what they supposed to have given them. But it, I guess they was given. I can't speak for them. But something was happening with the transactions. Like the, I guess they weren't giving the um, Grecians or the Hellenized right. Hebrews what they needed. And it was giving the Yehudis everything. Mm -hmm. But it was this whole dispute. Like, man, y'all didn't take care of our people. Y'all take care of y'all people. Right. So this whole thing came up in, in chapter 6. You keep reading. Then the 12 summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, it is not desirable that we should leave the word of Alua and serve tables. So they stopped. So then the, um, the apostles were like, hey, look, man, we got time for this. <laughs> <laughs> right? Whatever need, whatever, get it to them. We got to do this work. So, we got time for this living right here. You go. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Ruach HaKodesh and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. All right, so stop right there. So we're going to skip down to verse 9. So I'm going to show you how real this is and how this is just a pattern that keeps happening over and over and over again. We get scattered. We go into captivity. We go into slavery. Time passes. You will visit us. There's an awakening. The awakening happens. We have all these, he, these Greek thoughts and understandings, and we got to get this thing um, purged from us in the process. So read 9. Then there arose some from what is called the synagogue of the freedmen. There you go. Say it again. The synagogue of the freedmen. So in this territory, there was these slaves. 
Man. You go study the, the history of the, they call it the synagogue of the Libertines. It was our people. They were enslaved by the Greeks and Romans. They got they had they, they took their time. They bet they owned it. Bought their freedom like we did in America. Right. You know, some people bought their freedom. Mm -hmm. So they bought their freedom and they built a synagogue and it was serving your whole. So in that place, these you showing you that these were former slaves. Man. Just like it was in the islands, like it was in, in America. These former slaves that are, um, turned back to the scriptures, now they are monks, the Hebrews. That's right. So they would have called them what? Gentiles. Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Cyrenians, Alexandrians, and those from Cilicia and Asia. So you talking about Egyptians? You talking about Italians? Are you talking about people from um, Turkey? So you got Africans, e um, Italians, and Turks. Mm -hmm. Which all of them was Hebrews coming to that one place. Remember, it said there was people there from every nation. Right. Remember, because we got to read the context, right? The pretext and the post text. That's right. So the pretext in Acts one is that people came from every single nation, right? And so now in this post text, we seeing that some of, like, some of them are former slaves, right? Freedmen that was coming together from these other nations. And so now there's this whole tug of war between the Yehudis, people who live in um, Judea or Yehuda. Their whole life versus these ones who didn't know none of the culture and none of the structure that they uh, needed to walk in. Everybody got me? So I'm just clearing up this whole thing about that one example, Gentiles. See how long it took us to teach that? <laughs> yeah. That's right. right. One example. That's how many things in the, in the Bible is misinterpreted based on yeah. not going to the source information. Hallelujah. Praise you. So, contextual analysis, pre test, protest. Hebraic analysis, right? Because we know the scripture wasn't written in what? English. So that's our understanding. So we have to go actually to the Hebrew word to make sure that we got the right understanding. Even when you go into your lexicons and all that, you got to remember that stuff is not inspired. Right. Where it's 100%. That's just, that's just their best educated guess based off their research. That's more real of knowledge based than what we might have looking at. Right. Understand what I'm saying? And also you want to do like a Hebrew word uh, breakdown uh, analysis, understanding the paleo and understanding that in the language that each letter have a specific meaning that can give you a whole nother meaning of what it's talking about. Right. So all these things are hidden uh, in your Hebraic analysis. The next analysis that you want to do, you want to make sure that you understand the, uh, the, the scriptures is cultural. This is so important. Man, the chief right there. Oh, man. This is understanding Hebrew idioms. Chief already spoke on what an idiom is. Anybody want to re-speak on what idioms is? Where? Yeah, I should know now. Example, the big one. Nah, I want to test them. They should. Uh, some of them in Gus should know what that oh, is. Man, right. uh -huh. An idiom is a saying that we use within our culture. Like for example, we say it's raining cats and dogs. We're saying it's pouring down rain. Versus it not Hallelujah. Because if you don't understand the culture and what was going on on the time, each culture has a specific idiom in the sense of how they relate to each other. Right? We might be walking and you might see, no, this deep blues, use cheap, cheap, put them feet up right there. I might look at cheap shoes and be like, man! I'll catch crap. <laughs> <laughs> that thing popped like that. <laughs> Charlie on this lady. <laughs> we know Charlie horse means what? A cramp. Well, I might look at them shoes like, man, them shoes hot. <laughs> now, that can mean a couple of things. Like, it can be hot in the sense of like, man, like, I'm I could be talking about the style. Right. It can be hot, well, I could be talking about, oh, bro, you just stole that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But if I don't understand the cultural things that binds a culture together, I might look at that and be like, man, he didn't have the sun on his shoes, was cold on his shoes. <laughs> or I might look at them shoes and like, we might say, man, they, that's cold right there. Them shoes cold. And somebody studying us 20 years later, they would look at cold shoes, revelation from you. <laughs> but we need to understand that our shoes been hot. When your horn said shoes need to be cold. And the way you have cold feet is you gotta isolate yourself from wickedness and from sins so your shoes can stay cold. And they do a whole teaching series on 
the understanding of cold feet can be just as off. We laughing, but we have done it. See, Hassan, I told you, you got cold feet, I mean you're nervous. That's the devil. You got cold feet, I mean you're righteous. I mean you closer to the most. <laughs> All you have to do, you have to understand Hebrew idioms. You have to do uh, that's understanding the history also too. Uh, I got to understand the why is he saying this, right? If I'm understanding the history of it, then I got to see, okay, what was going on in the culture and outside of the culture at that time. And sometimes you have to study. He he did. He spoke a lot of revelation with what they did on a daily basis. You need to understand for him. They truly get the revelation. You definitely need to understand the ancient Near East Man. to understand the mindset of a Hebrew. Because once you understand the ancient Near East, then you'll be like, okay, I understand what covenants is. I understand why he told them not to do that. Just like if we take the, uh, the scripture in the Torah where it talks about a man not... Um, um, Shaving the corners of his of his of his uh, head. Now we might look at that and be like, man, you can't get no tape line now. You gotta let that thing just grow all the way. That's it. Your horse said no barbershop, no razor. And then you look in the scripture, you look in the prophets, and you see them using a the razor. You see, you were told one of the prophets to use a razor and cut us all the sound. You're like, wait, 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 wait. So you mean to tell me you're gonna look at that and in 2023? You think Yahuwah was talking about an actual haircut and tool and made a revelation of that. And you, because why? You didn't study what was going around in the ancient Near East that was an actual ritual, a scarification that was going on at the time that he didn't want them to be like. Most of the stuff he told them not to do was the stuff that was going on around them. But if you don't study that, you'll bring that all the way into today. Make the conviction of it and be wrong. Yeah. And you should have to tell you at the end, man, go get your hand up, man. Don't walk around with it like that. But the history of it and understand, I got to find, okay, was it a tribe doing that? Was it nations doing that? Was they doing that to understand? Because I, I know he ain't talking about no clippers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he couldn't have been. So I had to do... A Hebrew an idiom analysis, a history analysis, what's going on in the region so I can understand because he told them to do things based off what they could see mm-hmm. and what was going on around them. Yeah. You understand that? Yes, sir. Yeah, y'all saw Black Panther before? Yes, movie? So you remember um, Killmonger? We had all those keloids. Yeah. That was based on their tribe. So you see a lot of tribes. So I remember there was a bunch of nations that was in Egypt at the time because of the famine. They all came from all over. So some of them have tribes have scarification that's on their body, some of them on their head. So when Yahuwah he talks about, about razor on their head, what they'll do is they'll do these intentional scars yeah. right here on their face and on the corners of their heads that represent their devotion to the, to the, to the Ruach that they serve. Right. So what he's saying is don't do that. But if you don't have, like he's saying, the proper understanding, you'll be off with that. It's like I give you a Hebrew context that the whole Christian world don't understand. So when Yahushua Yahushu, um, starts speaking to the people, he says something about... Um, they ask him, when is the end going to come? And he uses this phrase, he says, no man what? Oh, yeah, come on with that. Right. Nobody knows what? So Christians took that and ran with it. They carried up a whole doctrine called the rapture. Right? And it was like, man, nobody knows that it can happen anytime. It can happen at any place. And so we everybody run around in fear about the rapture. But the gist of it is, when he says nobody knows the dead hour, he's actually tying it back to a, um, to a feast day. Right, because it's talking about what's coming up. Trump. Yes, right. Because in the midst of Trump, there's a time they're looking for the new moon. And in the, the, the time space of the new moon is between two days. Right. So nobody knows the day or the hour. And so the idea is that the trumpet is the announcement, announcement of what? The kingdom. When the trumpet is blown, then, it, then it's an announcement of what? The king. So what he says, nobody knows the day or the hour. He's giving you this idea, this concept of how he would come. He's going to come at the announcement. The scripture says what? He's going to descend with the, the blast of what? The trumpet. Trumpets. No man knows the day or the hour. Right. And add on to that idiom. Add on to that. Um, it go, and I'm going to connect every, all that. Right? It go back also to in Revelation chapter 3, and I think that verse 20, it says that I stand at the door and knock. If, any, if men and man will want me to come in, we'll come in and sup with him. Right? So if you understand that from a Hebraic uh, 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 
concept that's betrothal talk, right? right? There's a um, thing actually called the knocking ceremony, where a um, the betrothed, the man will go with his father, right? That's why it says, me and my father will come and knock at the door and what? Sup with you. That's all betrothal talk, that a young man would go with his father, come knock at the door of the bride's house. If she opens the door, that means she accepts him and want him to be his wife, right? If she don't open that door, that means that she has rejected him and rejected the chance of marriage. So what would happen if she opened the door and they come, the father and the son come in, they would lay down what would be the terms of the marriage. The fathers would get together. Once it's accepted, then the, 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 uh, the, the man would say to the woman, I must go away. But in my father's house, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they would uh, t- uh, take up that cup together, sip of that cup together, and it would solidify that they are going to be married, right? So what are you, who should tell you about the cup? What is he going to do about the cup? When he says, I'm not going to drink this cup again, until what? Oh, it's you, the king's here. Right, so that man, he will come, take that last cup with her, and he would never drink of any wine of that cup again until he returned. So what he would tell her, I must go away and prepare a place for you. So what the young Israelite man would do, he would go in his father's house. He's preparing a place for his bride. Now, as he's preparing, the bride must consecrate herself and make herself what? Kodesh to be prepared to be prepared to be a bride. But she don't know what day and hour he returning. Neither does the son. So the son is building and working and creating a space in his father's house because in ancient cultures, when they would get married, they would live in the father's house. Mm-hmm. They ain't doing that with mine. You, you don't. <laughs> you would stay with the father for at least a year. Right. right? So that man won't have to go to war. That man won't have to worry about certain things in that first year of marriage. But it would be the father's job to come in one day and say, now it's time for you to go get your bride. The son didn't know. The, the wife didn't know. Only the father knew when he sent his son to go get his bride. And that's when the trumpets would blow. All that would happen because they know the wedding feast of the lamb has what? Begun. So now all the other nations have to do what? Wait, make themselves ready. All that is in the culture. But if you don't understand the culture, you'll take that from a Christian perspective and say, you just need to have Jesus in your heart. <laughs> he done knocked at the door and you just needed to let him in. <laughs> <laughs> And you won't understand the cultural concept of why he said what he said, right? So this is letting you know that we are betrothed to Yahushua right now. But when he comes back, he's going to marry us, right? And that would establish the eternal covenant, right? That we're going to be made righteous because we're going to be one with him. Blood. Say it again. It's going to be with blood. Yes, sir. So yes, this is, sir. So let's go back to this. <laughs> So I mean, what do we just learn over there? What's the context of a of a um, of a uh, barit? Agreement. Agreement. It's a what? Agreement. So what? Everybody speak up. What we got? Agreement. Cut with blood. That's what I'm talking about. It's an agreement cut with blood. That's what a barit or a covenant is. So when that covenant is fulfilled, when we talk about the cup, you're drinking a cup. You don't drink a cup again uh, until the kingdom when he comes and establish the fullness of it. And so not only that, the cup that's um, the cup that they drink. This is the reason why the Hebrews drink um, wine at the cutting of covenants because in the ancient Near East, other other nations do other stuff. Yeah. They would drink blood. They drink that blood. Man. Even a lot of African cultures, yes. they would drink blood. But with, with the Torah that you established, we didn't drink blood. So what happens is the wine represents the blood uh-huh. of the cutting of the covenant. But in his return, when he consummates the covenant, there has to be blood. And so this is where the salvation comes into play. Because in the midst of his return, there has to be blood, great calamity, destruction, because anytime there is a salvation, um, that's how he rewards his people. So we talk about, she talk about this all the time. I said it like that, but you open up something like that. Go ahead. No, go ahead on. Listen. Say. <laughs> no, I'm listening to you. I never looked at it like that. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? So this is in the culmination, in the kingdom to come, this reason why you have to be saved from the judgment to come, because there's going to be, scripture says there'll be blood up to where? The horse is brighter. It's going to be a war. It's going to be a world war. It's going to be a ultimate destruction and culmination 
based on the wickedness that was done to our people, remember? Because they ain't got no covenant. So who was going to judge them based on what was done to us? But he said, now according to his Torah, which he ever breaks. Right? Does Yahuwah ever go against his word? And he holds himself to his word. So there's certain things that got to be done according to the Torah. Based on, because they didn't have no dealings with us, but because now they've had dealings with us, dealings with us these things apply with them. One, because of the shedding of blood, it has to be shedding of blood. Two, because of that shedding of blood and because of the robbery, then they got to repay us back sevenfold. And then, so that means that the judgment even got to be to sevenfold. So think about the worst, think about how bad what happened with us was. Think about, if you really know history, if you know how to translate a slave trade, right. it was it was like a horror movie. Mm -hmm. It was the worst thing that ever happened to anybody in the history of the world. Mm -hmm. Don't ever let nobody say that everybody, all of us have been through captivity, y'all trying to prove who y'all are through that. Because that's a lie. You got to look the scriptures say that. Mm -hmm. That ain't Daniel chapter 9. It speaks on, but let's read that real quick. Daniel chapter 9, so we can see uh, either you're going to believe you or you're not. Mm -hmm. But you are saying nothing happened like what happened on Jerusalem. Why he getting that over here? And I think you had something. You had something? <laughs> All right. What you got? Uh, I was just going to say um, what Moy uh, Yahushua just said relates back backwards as well because he also said, so you said that the the, um, the blood for other uh, cultures was related to like wine in our culture. Right. And Yahushua says when he comes back, he treads the wine cup alone. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Isaiah 66. Listen, man, go read um, the Isaiah's. If you read Isaiah, yeah, 63 on. Oh, yeah. oh, it, yeah. It's crazy. Like, you see what he said he's going to do? And so what you read in Isaiah 63 on is Revelations, like, 9 and on. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. Yeah. Everything is it's, it's parallel in this show. Yes. But see, when Christians don't teach you about that, though. Nope. They don't teach you about Joel when it says about, when he says that. Um, we got to go look at that one. Yeah, we got to read that one. Too. So this judgment that's coming is going to be the worst. It's going to, what we, what the, what the world is facing, not just America, all these worlds is facing and we coming up on, is going to be the worst apocalyptic event that ever happened on Earth. It's coming back to right? Nuclear holocaust. It's coming, right? And so in order for you to escape this salvation, it's going to a certain place you got to be in. You're going to read Joe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll read Daniel. We'll read Daniel. We'll go through a couple of them real quick, kind of show what they did and what he's going to do. All right, let's read that. Daniel, I think that's 9 and 9. Daniel 9, verse 9. To Yahuwah our Alua belong mercy and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against him. We have not obeyed the voice of Yahuwah, our Alua, to walk in his Torah, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. Mm. Yes, all Israel has transgressed your Torah and has departed so as not to obey your voice. Therefore, the curse and the oath written in the Torah of Moshe, mm. the servant of Alua, have been poured out on us because we have sinned against him. And he has confirmed his words, which he had spoke against us and against our judges who judged us by bringing upon us a great disaster. For under the whole heaven, read that again. Such under as, the what? For under the whole heaven, such has never been done as what has been done to Jerusalem or Jerusalem. So we see that. Under the whole heaven, there's nothing in the past or in the future that was done, that was done against Yahuwah, made that against his people. Let's go to Zechariah chapter 1, verse 15. Let's start at 14. All right, Zechariah, Yahuwah, Zechariah chapter 1, verse 14. So the Malak, who spoke with me... Let's start at 12. Let's start at verse 12. Then the Malak of Yahuwah answered and said. Make sure, wait, let's make sure everybody there. Everybody there? Praise you. All right, now watch, watch read. This is what you doing now. Mm. Read that. Then the Malak of Yahuwah answered and said, <coughs> Oh, Yahuwah Sabaoth, how long will you not have mercy on Jerusalem and on the cities of Yehuda, against which you were angry these 70 years? Mm. And Yahuwah answered the Malak, who talked to me with good, thub, and comforting words. So the Malak, who spoke with me, said to me, proclaimed, saying, Thus says Yahuwah Sabaoth, I am zealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with great zeal. I am exceedingly angry with the nations at ease. 
for I was a little angry, and they helped, but with evil intent. Therefore, thus says Yahuwah, I am returning to Jerusalem with mercy. Mm. My house shall be built in it, says Yahuwah Sabaoth. So he said, man, that the Gentiles, he said, y'all done afford the affliction. Right. So I was angry with them, but y'all started doing extra stuff. So now I'm going to have mercy upon them and, and wake them up and put them where they need to be. All right, let's go real quick to Joel chapter 3. <coughs> All right, Joel chapter 3. And see what he coming mad about. Because they be talking about he coming mad because he mad about uh, abortion, which is is. That he mad about homosexuality. And they made that's all what he coming mad about. Right. Even though he already know all that's an abomination. But let's see what he really mad about. Read that, Joel 3, verse 1. For behold, in those days and at that time, when I bring back the captives of Yehuda and Jerusalem, the captives of who? Yehuda and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will enter into judgment with them there. Mm. So hold up, hold up. So he's not in judgment with the descendants of Yehuda. Let's read it again. Y'all read what you said. Y'all read the context. Read it one more time what you said. I will also gather all nations. So just the nations, right? The nation. That's the Gentiles, right? Mm -hmm. Keep going. And bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. And I will enter into judgment with them there on account of my people, yeah. my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. They have also divided up my land. We gotta say this. So, what other people in history was taken and scattered to every nation on earth? Is there anybody else that we ever know of that ever happened? No. Okay. So right now he's telling you that in this judgment, which we read about in Revelation, which we read in Isaiah, and all that kind of stuff, it's not about them people. It's about the nations and their involvement with that people. That's right. All right, so Revelation, read all that, the four, uh, four horsemen. This is what you're going to find when we really study. The four horsemen is not our judgment. The four horsemen actually fight on behalf of the people. That's right. They come to judge everything that came against our people. Keep going. I'll let you know, this this whooping that coming ain't our whooping. You ever been where back in the day, you hope y'all got brothers and sisters. And uh, <laughs> you had a time when mama whooped everybody, daddy whooped everybody. <laughs> But you had them times where you know your brother did it. <laughs> your daddy asked you like, hey, who went out there and did that? And you like. <laughs> <laughs> and you see him get towed up. You be glad what? That ain't your whooping. You got whooped before. So I'm glad you're. This ain't my whooping now. It's like we'd, we'd have been judged first. Already now it's time for him to judge the nation. All right, keep reading. Read that, uh, read that over again. First go to verse 2. I want to I want to dictate now. I want to lay out what he mad about now. I will also gather all nations and bring them down. Psalms 83, all them nations that made a confederate, and we know it didn't stop then. It even went on all the way until today. Keep going. And bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. And I will enter into judgment with now, them. Now what you mad about though? Hmm. Why? Why you gonna enter judgment, you who with them? What you mad about? Let's see. They're on account of my people. On account of my people. That's one. My heritage. And my heritage. Y'all took my heritage, everything that I given to them, and destroyed it. And what's the third thing I'm mad about? Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. And what's that third thing? They have also divided up my land. Oh, man. You done, took, you done told my people up. You done took my heritage, the name that I gave them, the kabod that I gave them, and you made that be another people and had another people walking around like they my heritage. <laughs> Uh, people that I know that is wicked and of the synagogue of uh, 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 Satan, and they walking around with my stuff, with my name, with my kabod, as if I'm their allure and deceiving the whole world. Oh, no, nah, brother. I'm going to bust y'all head. And you're going to take my land and divide it. So go back to the land real fast. Come on out. 
So that land, so this is the thing about don't don't get caught up on the land mass of Israel. Right? Because even if you go study the, the promised territory of that land, that land goes from cover almost two continents. Right. So when you talk about dividing up the land, what I really believe you who are talking about is the scramble for Africa. Yes. So all the nations that you know yes, are in Africa, yeah. they weren't named, most of them weren't named by the people. Most of those names were given by the British. It was given by the French. It was given by uh, the Portuguese. It was given by um, the Dutch. The Dutch. Yeah. They literally yeah. came to Africa and they gambled for it. Oh, yeah. And they started splitting up and they started dividing our people against each yeah. other. Yes. So the divide and then all that territory, that's where our people are. The remnant of our people that's not in the diaspora, right. it's on the continent. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that that's when they came and they divided the land. Mm -hmm. And named it after themselves. And named it after themselves. Um, we got to go get that. Johannesburg and all that kind of food. Let's go get Psalms 49. Hold that right there. Get Psalms 49. Uh, we got to go get it. Psalms 49 and 10. Psalms 49 and 10. But we got we got to back up what was just been said. They took them name, took that land and started naming it after themselves. Verse uh, Psalms 49, verse 10. And boy, when I looked at this, I was like, ain't nowhere in the world. This ain't talking about it. I will press three there. For he sees wise men die. Wise men die. Likewise, the fool and the senseless person perish. They perish. And leave their wealth to others. So no wise man, no, he gonna die. You know he can't continue on that inheritance. He's gonna leave his wealth to others. But let me tell you about the mindset of this oppressor. He gone. Their inner thought is that their houses will last forever. So their inner thought is that their house, which is gonna be their name, is gonna last forever. Their dwelling places to all generations. So what did they do? They call their lands after their own names. <laughs> Man, this is wild. Right? <laughs> they did that so their heritage can live forever. And now you'll be calling your last name by a oppressor continuing his heritage. Mm -hmm. Saying you're American. Saying that you are uh, uh, even just using the term, all these other terms around it that we use, making that landmass be out rather than the name that you were against. Mm -hmm. But he said that was going to happen, and that's what it meant by. So that's a land back when I go to James Don't, 5. Go to James 5. So listen, so this name about Yahuwah, and then as y'all study, you start to understand it's about Yahuwah. So Yahuwah always about function. Yahuwah has all these different names, but it's the same name. His really name is just Yahuwah, but he have, every time he's going to do a specific thing, there'll be another title attached to it. Like you might say, people say, Yahuwah Rapha, or you know, Yahuwah Heal, or the healing, or he's my healer, in different terms like that, right? So he has this term that he always uses when he goes to destroy. It's, two, it's really two terms, man. But um, two names he go by when he calls himself. One of them is called Yahuwah Zabo. So he, anytime you hear him say Zaba O, he's about to destroy everybody. They, like you go look at the prophets, he's like, man, I'm about to you start calling himself Zaba O. He about to go, he about to go wild, he about to tear everybody. Up. And then the other name where he obliterates is Shaddai. You call himself. Anytime you start seeing him calling himself, they translate that the text is Almighty. That word is Shaddai. So in the Hebrew idea, they call it the, the double-breasted one, almost like a breastplate or whatever. But so it also it's about providing, but it's a double meaning. When he says double breasted one, not breasted like a woman. Context. Like, I'm not a man with breasts. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> right, okay. Not that. So, but the idea is that the other context is the destroyer. Mm -hmm. So that's what Shaddai means. Dana Shadi yeah. means to destroy or yes. obliterate. Yes. So sometimes you start hearing him call, call himself Shaddai, he's going to, it's over. Like, whatever nation it is, he's about to, about to crush it. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> anytime he's talking about our people most of the time, in his captivity, you start hearing him call himself Shaddai, you start hearing him call himself Zaba O. So, a long time I used to read the scripture in, in, in church, or people see it in church. And I'm like, what does Sabbat mean? Sabbat, what is that? Like, what are they talking about? Who is this thing? Read it. Verse <laughs> one. Verse <laughs> one. Verse one. <laughs> Come now, you rich. You who? Rich. You rich. The rich? All right, keep going. Weep and howl for your miseries that are coming upon you. Mm. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth eaten. Mm. Your gold and silver are corroded, and their corrosion will be a witness against you. Stop right there. And we'll Yo, your gold and your silver is corrupted, is 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 like rusted. So the idea is that you're gonna get into it, that the rich have his people in captivity and they got all this money just stacked up. So it's something that's rusted and moth-eaten, that means it's been sitting up for a long time and never been given out. 
So what he's saying is, he was going in in the scripture, he's like, man, listen, y'all better howl and weep. You, you're going to wish, this is going to wish that you were dead. Because all this stuff that's my people's, y'all got it stored up, y'all got it locked up, and y'all haven't given to them what they actually deserve. Okay. For the labor that they have given to you. Come on, keep reading. Man. This is what he says. It will be a witness against you and witness will against eat you. your flesh. You gonna do what now? Eat your flesh. You going like fire. You have heaped up treasure in the last days. Indeed, the wages of the laborers. Uh, who? The la wages of the laborers. What, what do those laborers actually do though? Who mowed your field? Who mowed your field? <laughs> which you kept back by fraud. Man. Cry out. So, this, so who are the laborers that work the fields in the captivity? So he's saying that, man, like all this stuff is corrupted, it's moldy, this stuff been sitting up for hundreds of years. All this stuff that y'all owe these people, y'all gave them none. They say, I'm coming to destroy it. I keep reading. And the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of Yahuwah Sabaoth. Right, stop right there. So this is why this is what everything we doing is important. Because he says the cries of the reapers have risen up. That means that it's certain ones that turn back and then like they start crying out to Yahuwah according to the covenant, mm -hmm. saying that this is wrong. This yeah. gotta be done. So when he hears it, he turns like now I gotta judge this thing. Now I gotta come in war. Now I gotta come destroy. It. Because now the people are crying out to me according to the covenant. Come on. Come on. You understand? So this is the reason why they teach you to be like that. That's why they want you to sit down and have um, peaceful protests. Yeah. That's why they want you praying like the prayers in the scripture. Because the prayers in the scripture, you know that well, King Daoud or David, people say, yeah. well, how he prays is, is radical. He's talking about radical. destroying whole nations right. in the name of Yahuwah. Yeah. They don't want you thinking and actually doing any other kind of stuff, even though they're going to say they worship the same alleged God. You understand what I'm saying? So the idea is that it's a certain people that look at all the atrocities. Once they came into the covenant and they turn around and they start saying, Yahuwah, I done done everything that you told me to do. I done came, I keep the covenant. Now I done return to you. I believe in your son. I've been immersed in his name. I serve you day and night. Hear my cry. Uh, the Yahuwah said, I raise up. That's the bullshit. Hallelujah. Hear what? So I'm going to fire on my eyes. The day of vengeance is at hand. And also, this goes back to what uh, what the uh, what the Melakim were talking about as far as Hebrew idioms as well, because a lot of times if you just read "cry out" in English, just some uh, Amer brought out a while ago, you would think like "boo hooing." I hear their cries. You think, oh, okay, boo hooing and tears. Right. Now it can be that as well. But actually, what um, Malek Yahusha was bringing out those prayers and, and uh, that Dawu was doing in the Psalms, that's a crying out. Oh, yes, yeah. You know. Um, through declaration, yeah. mm -hmm. through proclaiming a thing. Mm -hmm. That's also crying out as well, so hallelujah. hallelujah. He going right okay. You have lived on the earth in pleasure and luxury. You have fattened your hearts as in a day of slaughter. You have condemned, you have murdered the just. He does not resist you. Therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of Yahuwah. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and latter rain. You also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of Yahuwah is at hand. Do not grumble against one another, brethren, lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. The judge is standing at the door. My brethren, take the prophets who spoke in the name of Yahuwah as an example of suffering and patience. Indeed, we count them blessed who endure. You have heard of the perseverance of Job and seen the end intended by Yahuwah, that Yahuwah is very compassionate and merciful. Yes. But above all, my brethren, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or with any other oath, but let your yes be yes and your no, no, let you fall into judgment. So, so anyway, I just make it, so going back to that verse, read verse four one more time before we move on. Verse four. 
Indeed, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, cry out. And the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of Yahuwah Sabaoth. So again, so that's the age that we're in. Right. Yes. Hallelujah. Let's go back and finish up, Joel. Again, uh, this other uh, place we'll go, but we'll, we'll wrap up. Well, you finish a little bit on salvation. Okay. So I think it's, uh, it's close to five, right. and we got to, we'll have to move everything, have everything set back up by six o'clock. Gotcha. So we'll, we'll stay for like 30 more minutes after this, and then 5.30, everybody will work to get everything set back up. So we can be out of here before six. So we got to be out before six, not stop before six. You got it. So I know it's going to be some time of talking and fellowship and all, so we want to leave time for that. So you want me to start where we left out on verse three? Yeah. I'll start over. Okay. Joel chapter three, verse three. They have cast lots for my people, mm -hmm. have given a boy as payment for a harlot, and sold a girl for wine that they may drink. Indeed, what have you to do with me, O Tyre and Sidon, and all the coasts of Philistia? Will you retaliate against me? But if you retaliate against me, swiftly and speedily, I will return your retaliation upon your own head. Mm. Yeah. What have you done? Because you have taken my silver and my gold. Go back to James 5. Yep. And have carried into your temples my prized possessions. Mm -hmm. Also, the people of Yehuda and the people of Yerushalayim, you have sold to the Greeks mm. that you may remove them far from their borders. Mm. Behold, I will raise them out of the place to which you have sold them mm -hmm. and will return your retaliation upon your own head. Now what's going to happen to them? I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the people of Yehuda. Hold up now, hold up now. The pastor ain't going to preach you that. <laughs> they ain't going to read that verse now, folks. Nope. After that scripture, they're going to stop. They ain't going to say nothing about that. Go on. I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the people of Yehuda, and they will sell them to the Sabians, to a people far off, for Yahuwah has spoken. Proclaim this among the nations. Do what? Proclaim this Man. among the nations. Do what? Proclaim this among the nations. Do what else? Prepare for war. Prepare for what? Prepare for war. What else to do? Wake up the mighty men. Huh? Wake up who? Wake up the mighty men. The who? The mighty men. While us as men, well, we got to take this personal. We got to be ready to die for the covenant. We got to be ready to die for our children. We got to be ready to die for our wives. We got to wake up and quit being sleeping lions and got to keep allowing this oppression and these lies and hypocrisy to keep happening. And we be so passive about it. Keep going. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Mm. Beat your plowshares into swords mm. and your pruning hooks into spears. So to the hoop. Oh, go ahead. So who used plows and pruning hooks? Slaves. Slaves. Yeah. Keep going. Let the weak say, I am strong. The weak say what? I am strong. I sang it. <laughs> Let the weak say, I am strong. That ain't how he say it, say it. <laughs> that thing is nursing you to sleep. <laughs> Let the weak say, I am strong. <laughs> You're behind staying weak. You and, you and Jesus just weak together. Both of y'all taking pictures like this. Yeah. <laughs> Man, boy, them nations, they did something to us, boy. That we actually believe we serve a savior that's feminine. Right. That don't look. Do you know that that's unheard of in the ancient world? Serving a savior that don't look like you and serving a European. <laughs> and ascribing deity to a European that didn't have in the ancient world a spirit. That's why they wasn't spiritual. 
And this is why they dumbed you down with intellect. Mm -hmm. Because they found out if I make you intellectual, yes, you won't sir. tap into your See, power. So now you esteem everything based on what you can measure in space and in science. Mm -hmm. But you won't go back to spiritual roots no more. Mm -hmm. Because they had to try to figure it out. How am I coming against some of these people? And we're trying to war against them. And they do something and say something. And then we get locked like this and don't know what's... Mm. <laughs> Can't get out of this. <laughs> uh, we coming at them with horses. And our horses just <laughs> start going the other way. They say, you know what? We're going to dumb these people down. And uh -huh. we ain't going to let them learn nothing. And we're going to build them off our intellect. Yes. And this is why we don't even esteem us as scholars if we don't have a PhD right. behind right. our Because right. yeah. it's about intellect yep. rather than spirituality. Yes. Yes. And then the spiritual things you think dumb. Yep. Somebody get spiritual with you. Oh, they don't take all that. <laughs> Speaking of talk, what that? What in the world is that? As if that's a new phenomenon. Right. But you think you're going to PowerPoint your way out of this captivity. <laughs> they were, but listen, they did a great job. Now, I got to get to them. Them book presses, they said, these over here, these 40 years. Listen, they ain't never waking up. Ever. And we just, I ain't never seen so many natural people in this awakening oh. until I came in this awakening. I ain't gonna lie, it was more spiritual people in the church. It's true. I don't care how you look at me after that. Listen, I could go, there's some people right now that's in the church that can get a demon off you and shift something in your life. And they don't gain the work for you. And you out here know you Israel, and you like, oh, take all this. That there is this and that there is that. You can't break nobody out of nothing. All you're looking for is a scripture to put a PowerPoint behind when we not only are oppressed by natural beings, but demonically and, yeah. and Nephilim oppressed. Right. What you gonna do about the Nephilims? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that when they inhabit your body and they take over. Right, right. What you gonna do? Mm. Mm. Well, the scriptures say line upon line. <laughs> yeah, you gotta prove to me first somebody got a Nephilim. <laughs> You got to prove because that was the sons of self that went to the daughters of man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you up here looking crazy. And then the press is like, we got to know. Yeah. Intellectual. Yeah. They don't know nothing about no war. Don't know nothing about no worship. Mm -hmm. Don't know how, how in your dance, in your war, that you can ship things from where you went and change the world events. You don't believe that, though. But the ancestors did. You don't believe that. The press believed it, too. Cause they all on it. So this, this, this is what I'm saying. Y'all don't know about how stuff works. Cause y'all read. Y'all actually, we don't read. We just don't. We don't read. So if you know his, when we were in the captivity, there were certain things that the uh, people on plantation said, don't let them have. They start outlawing djembe's. They didn't want us playing any music. They didn't want us. We had certain dances that we would do. They said, don't do it because what was happening was things was changing. A wild stuff would happen on the, on the plantation. And they was like, man, we got to stop them from doing these things because it was working. Mm -hmm. I ain't saying all of us you would. Right, right. I ain't saying that you right. We were doing some stuff. But we're talking about is the existence of the spiritual realm. Right. Right? Get me wrong now. Right. But the idea is that go back, if you know history, if you know about the plantations, there were certain things that they made sure that we didn't have on the plantations right. because they didn't want, they knew that these things had these results. Right? right? But then again, the, the logic, the logic is. Logic gonna be your enemy. Logic gonna take you down. Logic is a whole spirit because in your mind you can't you can't comprehend the things that can't be comprehended with logic. Yeah. That's real. I just be honest. Yeah. Um, but anyway, but saying that say because to be honest, the world that we live in defies logic. Yes, sir. Right. Because you can't. If it, if the world could be explained through logic, you can give me an answer for everything in existence, but you cannot. <laughs> You can't understand, you don't understand a ruach. Somebody died because all of a sudden they're perfectly healthy now, or their heart just stopped. Now they dead. How can their heart just stop and then they be dead? All of a sudden the ruach comes. Because you can jump somebody and what? Restart their heart. Right? right? So anyway, I'm not getting all this stuff. But anyway, yeah, but the idea is going no back into it. You know, it's some, get somebody an electrical current and jump and jump right. their body back into existence. Right. They don't come back as a vegetable. They come back with a whole person. No, right. 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 Anyway, so um, the context is, uh, so we see this whole thing, we know about this judgment that's coming. 
So real quick, Isaiah 63, we're going to read the first five verses, we're going to keep moving. Nah, first seven verses. You on 63? Yeah, 63. You got him a left. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. All right, verse one. Who is this who comes from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? Mm. Yeah. This one who was glorious in his apparel, Hallelujah. Yeah. traveling in the greatness of his strength. Mm -hmm. I who speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Mighty Why is what? mighty to save? To do what? To save. So we're going to get into that word save now. Keep going. Why is your apparel red and your garments like one who treads in the winepress? Um, I have trodden the winepress alone, and from the peoples no one was with me. For I have trodden them in my anger and trampled them in my fury. Their blood is sprinkled upon my garments, and I have stained all my robes. For the day of vengeance is in my heart. What? Yeah. The day of vengeance is in my heart. The day of what? The day of vengeance is in my heart. So what's coming up is the day of vengeance, right? It's been prophesied. We say this a lot of times, but I don't think y'all understand how serious everything is hmm. right now in the world, what's going on with us. Even the fact that we sit here having this conversation about these things. Yeah. All this stuff, going back to your logic, is improbable. It's improbable that all of a sudden you see these people in America that all of a sudden start believing that they're the Israelites out of the blue. Right. <laughs> when they ain't believe, you know, then they had no culture, no heritage, nothing tied them to any of these things. And then not only that, we teach the people on the, on the continent who actually got their culture in tech right. about this culture. Right. right, which is crazy. Without it. It's insane. That's crazy. Right? But that's what the scripture says, that the Yehuda are going to be what? Going to be saved first, or they're going to be rose up first. So in this time, you see all these things happening, you know we're coming to the time of the day of vengeance. The day of vengeance that they've been prophesied, be honest, is the time of Noah. After Yehuda destroyed the world with a flood, he made a promise, he says it won't be water, but what? Fire. So we look in the fire, we see that all through the prophets, there's been this time that was prophesied that Yehuda is going to judge with fire. Right. Right? You about to read in Jeremiah about that scripture? You got to pull up. Jeremiah? Yeah, 50 or 51. Okay, yeah, yeah, I got you. Jeremiah. Jeremiah 51? Where you want me to start? Um, I don't even know, because that whole thing talks about it. Well, I ain't keep going, now. I ain't read from one. Yeah, just read from one real fast. All right, Jeremiah Yahoo 51, verse 1. Thus said Yahuwah, behold, I will raise up against Babylon. All right, so let's stop right there. What do y'all think Babylon is? Anybody else? Most of like, some of y'all Jamaican. I don't know what Babylon is. Yeah, you're talking about Jama Babylon all the time. Mm -hmm. It's the world system, but who runs this world system? The Romans? United States. It's the United States in the league with these other nations that we see about in Psalms that we just read. They're all in allegiance with the United States, right? Mm -hmm. So right now, the United States calls the shots, even though they're about to stop calling the shots. They've been calling the shots for too long. But again, it's a world system that's perpetrated by the United States and the European nations, right? right? That's why we talked about the UN before. So the UN is this conglomerate of nations, but their headquarters is in the United States. Right. In New York. In New York. <laughs> Yeah. Right? This is the reason why the, um, the UN don't really listen. The UN will come with a resolution that the United States don't even have to, like, um, really honor. Like, I don't know if y'all know this, but about five years ago, the UN came out with a document saying that Jewish people don't have no right to Israel. Did y'all know that? Yeah, no. Oh, yeah, it was public and everything. They made a whole announcement. The UN's like, hey, look, they don't have no, no genetic heritage or right. any connection to the land. <laughs> but the United States say they do. And so even though they made that announcement, it was like they didn't make the announcement. Because the United States has have that much power in that power structure. Right. So anyway, so um, Yahuwah has all these prophecies about this, this stuff that's going to happen in that land in the day of judgment when Yahuwah rises up to pay them back for everything that was that was happening or that happened. So there's a scripture that says that he that leads in the captivity go. must go into captivity because that's how Yahuwah rewards you. It's always going to be eye for eye. I know Christianity told you that that's over with. It's not over with. It is. It's always going to be eye for eye because it's, he spoke it from the beginning. The idea is that we read with, um, with Yahushua talking about that. He's talking about dealing with your brother and no, like, basically judge your brother while y'all going through a captivity. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. He's talking about, talking about your brother. Give your brother your clothes. Right. Your brother ain't your enemy. Right. Like the person, exactly. when you and your brother live in the house when the thief come in to break in and kill you. Right. That's right. right? So while he's breaking in and trying to kill you, what you're not going to do is argue with your brother when y'all trying to uh, survive. Right. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. It won't make any sense because it's more than likely you're going to do what? 
die in the process while you squabbling with the person when y'all in what? Imminent what? Danger. Imminent what? Danger. Imminent what? Danger. Danger. So this is the context of, so I, if I asked you, I said, what is a salvation? What would you tell me? What is salvation? Yusha. Yusha is salvation. Okay. Anybody else? What is salvation? <laughs> Delivering from your oppressor uh, and um, finances, land, and all of the All right, anybody else? Delivering from your physical and All right, anybody else? Welcome to your old All right, anybody else? Freedom of worship, being saved. Who said it? Yeah. All right. So the thing is, all y'all right. All those. Hold on, chick. Hold on, chick. Give me, give me some book. Give me a scripture. All that's too. How I know that's true. Oh. Give me a scripture behind. It. See, y'all, y'all want to dance about it. Give me a scripture. What about Isaiah fifty-three? Isaiah fifty-three. Right, okay, so Isaiah 53 is it's based on, it's pretty much our way back to Yahuwah, right, through his son, Yahushua. Right. But we're talking about the biblical understanding from the consistency analysis from what it would be from Genesis or from when the covenant started to the end, right? Yahushua came and made us right to be for Yahuwah's uh, Judgment to come up off us that we may be covered under his blood, that we might be able to have rights back to him. But it's promises that he has given us that in a mind of a Hebrew, what he would have thought salvation is, right? So I, I want that. Not necessarily atonement. Because what you were saying is more on lines of atoning and atonement, making us back right with the most high. Ezekiel 37. Who? Ezekiel 37. Okay. All right. Uh, Anybody else? Joshua 21, nah, that's what I'm talking about. That's a good one. What you got? Um, but it talks about like the rest around that a little would restore it to the best of wealth. I mean, well, I love to read that. Period. Yeah. Um, so uh, starting at 21, all the cities of Levites within possession of the children of Israel were 40 and um, eight cities with their suburbs. These cities were everyone with their suburbs around about them. Thus you had 21 and 21? It was 21, 41 to 45. Okay, there we go. Oh, and then um, it says, And you would give unto Israel all the land which he swore to give them to their fathers, and they possess it and dwell there. And you would gave them rest round about according to all that he swore to their fathers, and there stood not a man of all their enemies before them. And you would deliver uh, all their enemies into their hands. Mm. And there failed not on any uh, of any good thing which Yahuwah has spoken unto the house of Israel and all came to Beautiful. So let's go from now. So based on that scripture, who is the first person to be saved? Read the scripture again, the, the last part of it. Um, 45, mm-hmm. uh, verse 45. There failed not aught, um, of any good thing which you would have spoken unto the house of Israel all came to pass. I mean, law bad. Like, so read both verses. Oh, okay. Right. And Yahuwah gave them rest round about according to all that he swore unto their fathers. And there stood not a man of all their enemies before them. And Yahuwah delivered all their enemies into their hands. There failed not on any of any good thing which Yahuwah has spoken unto the house of Israel all came to pass. So again, based on that scripture, who was the first person to receive salvation? No off. Great point. Great point. Great point. So, Noah was saved from, because remember he had people that were mocking him and all this other stuff. Right. He was saved from his enemies. Everything was given unto him. All things were subdued unto him. He found grace. Matter of fact, he had rest, because the word Noah means what? Rest. Rest. Rest, rest from <laughs> all his enemies. <laughs> Let's do it.
You got me? So, we got a question real quick. No, not a question. Hmm? Another scripture that goes towards our salvation is in Joel. I just had to get my phone because I don't know the scripture. That's how, that's how that's so because we, we ain't got but it's 510 right now. Okay. And uh, let, let Chief go ahead and finish okay. his points. All right, so Noah was the first one to receive salvation, right? So and the reason why I'm saying that, I'm pointing this out because in church they taught you that salvation meant something spiritual, right? So you got to understand that in the context of what these words mean, um, salvation is not a, a word that's directly involved in spiritual context. Like you read again, read everything that double said again. You just said. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's a difference between. Hold on. It's a difference between salvation and being born again. Mm -hmm. So you who should say, I came to give you what rest of your soul. Right. Come to me, all that that labor, and and, and I'm mourning because I'm going to give you rest. I'm going to give you rest for your soul. And when you believe on me, I'm going to give you the spiritual power to become a son of the Lord. That happens spiritually, which was also prophesied in Ezekiel 37 when the breath be put back in us and we'll awaken and come back. Right. That's different from the term and understanding consistently from Genesis to Revelation of what salvation is. Right. One is the salvation of your soul. Another is the promises that he foretold that he was going to do by delivering us. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. So read again. Um, rest. Go ahead. Round about. According mm -hmm. to all that you swore unto the prophets. That's the word Noah. Mm -hmm. And there stood not a band of all their enemies. All the enemies being distinguished. Mm -hmm. You right. would deliver them, uh, delivered all their enemies into their hands. Mm -hmm. Their barrel failed not on any of any good thing which Yahuwah has spoken unto the house of Israel. All came to pass. All the restoration of things that were concerning them. So do, these are the, the things that Noah got in the midst of that because there was enemies round about him. Matter of fact, he was what? The only righteous in his what? Generations. Generations. Generations, right? The whole world was what? Corrupt before Yahuwah. That's right. And then Yahuwah came with a calamity, uh, uh, apocalyptic event right. that ended and wiped all those things away and set him and his family at the top of the food chain. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we like, like Chief just said, so we talking about in church, we think, like, they have baptism. We say, we had 10 salvations. 20 salvations. I, I see you, like, white church. We had 350 salvations. This is a mega church or whatever. I'm like, what? How you going to have a salvation? <laughs> Scripture says that he that way. <laughs> Endure to the way. Yeah, shall be saved. Shall be saved. So how are you going to have a salvation? Exactly. Right. What is that? Exactly. Right. It's not a thing. There's no such thing as what that. Really? Right? Say right? <laughs> so again. I said, what really is that? Right, exactly. <laughs> but, so, a salvation... Again, the context of what we're looking at salvation is um, we they acquainted to ruachal or spiritual redemptive processes. Mm -hmm. But salvation is a rest is, is restoration and it's um, provision. provision. Mm -hmm. Restoration and provision. Right? My handwriting is terrible, so I'm gonna probably write it, y'all gonna be able to read it anyway. Y'all got it, write it down. Restoration <laughs> and provision. That's salvation. Right now, righteousness and kodesh is when we say holiness. Those are the rocko elements that lead you to the salvation. Right. You got to be righteous. Right. And you got to be kodesh. People say holy. Right. It's those words. It's those two words that qualify you for this provision mm -hmm. and for this protection. Noah was what? Righteous in all his ways. So he received a salvation in the midst of a worldwide calamity. Mm -hmm. yeah. You understand? Yes. So this is the reason why this is the thing that's mixed up. But if people teach this in reverse, mm -hmm. they think once you um, are claimed to have this, then that is your salvation. Mm -hmm. Now the reason why Christians came up with that is because they already have their salvation. They're, they're living in it. <laughs> they're living in it. Right? But they brought you into captivity. So if salvation means provision mm -hmm. and safety, right. who has always had salvation? Right. <laughs> right. Provision, safety, welfare. Who? Oh. Who has always had that? Oh. Right. 
And if you take the, if you go in and take uh, Deuteronomy 28, 8 verse 1 on down, you'll see that that's the nation stands. They are the head and what not the what? They are above only and not what? They have all might and power in their what? So they are in their salvation. And they're not, they not trying to give it up. So if they can keep you breaking the laws, their salvation is not going to what? End. But our salvation is coming. The fall of us was the salvation. And some translations say it is a riches. Yeah. Of the Gentiles. So it's finances. So in, let's say in the ancient world. In the ancient world, if you have money, that means you can't be a slave. Right. They can enslave you because enslavement in the ancient Hebraic term was somebody who, who basically gave themselves to be a servant right. based on their lack of finances. Right. And then to servitude. And then to servitude. That's in our law. Right. Oh, yo, you were going to slavery based on that. We even got a law of redemption where somebody pays your price, right? To do what? Bring you out. Bring you out of slavery. That's why Yahushua, that's why they call him the Savior. In other words, for his kinsman, Redeemer. Because what he does is he paid this price, he's paying the price that you're paying as a slave to bring you out of your captivity and set you back with what? Provision and protection. Right. Right? So that, let me see jumping there. Go, go, go. That, and that's why Yahushua said it's a speed in that I go that another may come to you, which is the comforter, which is the Ruah Akadesh, which is the earnest of your expectation. Your earnest, even when you put earnest money up on a house, what does that mean? Mm-hmm. What does that mean when you put earnest money up on a house? It's a promise. Alright, it's a promise. You put it down as a promise. And then you go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. It says that the Ruach is the earnest of our expectation. And it says it is the sealed. It's the seal until the day of what? So evidence of the Ruach is to believe and to know that I'm sealed until the day that the salvation what? Comes. Yeah, go ahead. So again, these are signs of the Ruach. Go ahead. Yes. I was just going to say, because on the word Torah, uh, just real quick, Torah in Hebrew, actually, that's what it says. That goes back to um, that goes back to the Hebrew word analysis. Because when you look at... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I got room. When you look at Torah... So I'm writing it in English, because I know, you know, it might be too deep to just go into straight Hebrew. But the Hebrew word Torah, is literally, that's a... Uh, so the Torah, that's a ta, that means a mark or seal. And the Ua is the is the O. The Ua, then you got the Resh, that's the head, and the Hay is a revelation. So it's literally about being sealed. It's about being sealed or marked on the forehead by the Ruach. It's about Torah. It's about being sealed by the Ruach. It's about having a mark on your forehead. <laughs> and it's um So you notice how he mentioned uh Malek mentioned Breed. So Breed is the same thing. See, Breed and Torah are related to each other. Because of the resh and the tav. Mm-hmm. Breed has the resh and the tav as well. And again, breed is about having a mark or seal, the mark, the tav, on your head. Y'all see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that goes back again to uh, what, what, what Revelation. Y'all hear about the mark of the beast. That's the right. house that has it. Yeah. I'm going to say that house. Yes. That beast is the secure. word bet. It was, go back to what? The house. It's a specific house. And it was Noah in his what? House. Ah, that's it. Hallelujah. Now that was it. I was just going to say uh, Revelation with the mark of the beast. Yep. That's another con- uh, concept that was yes. misunderstood a lot in Christianity. Yes. Right. Yes. The church, you know, oh, they're looking for this, yep. this mark. They're going to have this thing on their head and on their, on their arm. But, uh, you know, Hebraism, an uh, idiom, you know, an uh, Israelite would have known, okay, that's something that's marked on your head. That's in your, in your actions and in your thoughts. It's in your mind. Right. And Yahuwah know, talked about the scriptures. Be on his Torah being a sign and make it let it be a sign on you like frontless between your eyes. Yes. And so you see that in Torah as being like a mark on your head. Yes. So we know the mark of Yahuwah is about the Torah and the mark of the beast is about those who are not in the not in that covenant. Who are not in the Torah. Edom. 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 By that tabernacle. Right. So like, so again, so like, like you just said, so that whole idea of the mark of the beast. Remember, now, if you read in Revelation, it's, uh, the beast has his followers that have a mark on their forehead, but also the ones that's in Zion have the Father's name yep. in their forehead. That's the Torah and the covenant. That's right. But those are the ones who follow Yahushua, mm-hmm. because Yahushua came to bring us salvation by making us what righteous and kodesh by us receiving the ruach. Right. 
which leads to these things, which if, uh, prepares seals us, us for that. and seals us for the salvation. Sealed until what? The day of redemption. Of redemption. Then when the redeemer comes and pays the price for the slave, the one that what labored in your fields, we just right. read James five. Right. That's one that, that's the one that's the Lord Zava Oak comes to war on behalf for. Right. But if you know if you're not in the Torah, if you don't if you're not in the covenant, if you don't have the ruach, come on. then you are cut off. He will look at you as a Gentile. Remember I told you say we was all called Gentiles? Right. So when he comes to judge the Gentiles or the nations, he's gonna cut you down too. He's gonna look at you as Edom. So anyways, so y'all got this? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to raise this okay. so we can get started to wrap this up. Uh, Genesis 45 and 7. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. So the Lord sent me before you to preserve a posterity for you in the erects in the earth and to save your lives from great deliverance. So that's what Yosef was telling to his brothers, that those things had to happen for, to me so that I can be risen up to be able to preserve you set you up for the posterity that you're going to have in the earth and to save you by great deliverance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You want this? You can raise that because better, sir. So, let's look at this. Go ahead, yeah, she's she trying to get it. Yeah. Don't get that scripture. No, I know it's burning on the inside. Go get it. Up. For the provision, and then, like, the, the scripture in Joel is like, yeah, so he said, uh, it's Joel 2.19, it says, Yea, says Yahuwah will answer and say to his people, Behold, behold I will send you corn and wine and oil, and you shall be satisfied therewith, and I will make you no more reproach amongst the heathen. Right. Right. Provision and restoration. Provision and restoration. That's it. That's salvation. We won't get into the actual word. So, but I'm going to give you one more reference, because everybody, like, well, what do you see that in the Berea Hadashah? People said the, uh, the New Testament. Luke chapter 1. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Luke chapter that one. Let's get loads of the whole thing. Yes, sir. Word for word. Let's go to Luke chapter one. And then um, we shall start at verse sixty-seven. All right. Listen, what happened? So he's gonna tell you now. So this is the birth of Yehuda the Immerser. But they go from you and the Immerser and start talking about the Mashiach or the Messiah, mm -hmm. right? Gonna tell you the whole purpose. Remember, he came what? By, by we are the people according to the flesh that he came for. So he's going to tell you what that process is. He's going to tell you the idea of what salvation means. Go ahead. Now his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Ruach HaKodesh and prophesied, saying, Blessed is Yahuwah Elua of Yisrael. Who? Yahuwah Elua of Yisrael. So he's not Yahuwah of the Gentiles. Mm. Man. For he has visited and redeemed his people. His who people? His people. His people. Keep going. And has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of, in the house of his servant Dawood. Stop right there. So that's why when you read in Revelations, when um when they all come and they bow down before the Lamb, they start they start talking about um he made us what kings and priests. That's right. And we shall reign on the erect because out of the sea of Dawood comes these priests who receive a portion and protection and are set in the land to establish the nation. Right. Mm -hmm. Keep going. And he spoke by the mouth of his Kodesh prophets, who have been since the world began. His name is Bill spoke about forever. That's the thing. It's not nothing new. We're talking about, we can trace it back from Noah. We started with Noah. Right. All the way down to now. Right. But keep going. That we should be saved from our enemies. That we should be what? Saved from our enemies. So we ain't talking about remission of sins right now. Mm -mm. Right? We should be what? Saved from our enemies. I right, keep going. And from the hand of all who hate us. Right. All the do us? All those that hate Who hate us. Who? Hate. Who hate us. So all the, the nationalities, all the peoples that hate you. The idea of this salvation. I remember now, you can't receive the salvation without being Kodesh, being righteous, and having a right. That's right. But that's how you qualify for this salvation. Right. You got to be in the covenant. You got to be in the beret. You got to keep the Torah. Mm -hmm. Right? You got to do all these things. But in the midst of that, the purpose of this salvation is to be saved for the people that hate you. The people that take advantage of you. Remember the, the, the cries come to the ears of who? You who is our old? That the gold and the silver have been robbed from you. That you've been, that they've mowed you down. I wanted to go back to Isaiah, um, Jeremiah. But he talks about all the, the devastating things. He said, one, one thing says that they kill us and think that they um they do a, um, God service or Lewis. Right. Right. Kill us on purpose. Zechariah 11 and 5. Zechariah 11 and 5. So it's like we're going through all these things. So now, comes to what? 
the salvation, the protection, the provision, the rising up of a house. Noah, one house in the midst of a great and utter worldwide catastrophe that gets raised and was the, uh, was the least and becomes what? The head or the, or the most or the highest. Keep going. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. To do what? Perform. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers. So this is the mercy to our fathers. Yeah. Not to their fathers. Come on, man. This stuff is about you. Right? Them and the, the Gentiles, can they're going to receive salvation through your salvation. Because he's coming for them. Right. 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 He's coming for them. Right. Right? If they don't repent and turn from it, he, they all going to be destroyed. Scripture says, in, um, I think, Isaiah 62 or 63. See, it's between 61 and 63. Because uh, it's talking about um, the Basura. But in one of those verses, he says, the, the nation don't serve you. He says, I'll, I'll, I'll destroy them. So I'll right. them. Right. That's what he said. And then they ain't gonna be, you know, what you ain't going to be able to do is when he coming, start repenting then. <laughs> because it talked it, it talk about in Isaiah 63 that he coming with binges in his heart. That mean ain't going to be no repentance. That mean he ain't going to have no mercy. He just going to see blood. So you can't see him come and say, I repent. No, it's over then. Right. So you better repent now. <laughs> you better repent now. Keep going. <laughs> to perform the mercy promised to our fathers. To our fathers. Man. And to remember his cold dash covenant. And go back to the Berit. Remember I told you, you got to be, you be, gotta be in the covenant. You got to have the Berit. You got to have the um, Torah. You got to be in Torah. Walk in Torah. You got to have the Raka Kodesh. You got to be righteous and Kodesh. You got to be, and if you do all these things, now you become kings and priests in the midst of the arrest when yeah. you will come to shake the arrest. Yeah. He comes to turn up, then he says that the earth will what? Real to and fro like right. a drunker. Right? The, the, the you will is going to shift everything. In the midst of the shifting, the, the bottom, the head going to be the tail, the tail, the tail is going to be the head. Right? Man. So, keep going. The oath which he swore to our father Abraham. He's going to double down on it now. <laughs> keep going. To grant us that we, being way. delivered from the hand of our enemies, to do what? Might serve him without fear. In what? Though? In what? In kodeshness and holiness and just, righteousness. Did we just say that? Yeah. You give you everything right here. You want to source scripture? Luke 1. Keep going. Before him all the days of our life. Mm -hmm. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the highest. For you will go before the face of Yahuwah to prepare his ways. To himself. give knowledge of salvation mm -hmm. to his people by the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our Lua, with which the day spring from on high has visited us. To give light to those who sit in darkness mm -hmm. and the shadow of death. Shadow in of death. the shadow. Of death. In the shadow. shadow. This is what y'all don't realize. This is where we are right now. Yeah. And a lot of us ain't gonna realize it until the calamity start happening when the when the, when the food uh, supply chain collapse, when the nukes fall, when when nations start rising, when it be hot wars on American soil. All this stuff is coming. Man. You also gonna be swore without and within. So the idea is that it's this down this time, because right now we're just living in the shadow of death. It's like death is right here. Destruction is right here, just like it was in Noah's time. Noah had so many years to, to preach this thing. And after that, he had to shut the door. Nobody else can come in. And this one house was sealed. Think about this. It ended up being just him and his house, but it was open to everybody. He preached this salvation message to every creature. All of them had the ability to do what? Be saved from the calamity. But it's only those that had came in covenant with him. Right? Oh, man. Man. So let's look at this. So we're talking about the, the word um, salvation. So one of the root words for salvation is shah. Shah. So we pretty much done broke everything else down. We got no huge breakdown of this. Unless you want to, unless Mushal, she want to go into the breakdown of the word shah. But um, the word shah, when you break it down in layman's terms, it's going to mean those things. It's going to mean salvation from your enemies. Right. It's going to mean rest, all those different things. So this is the reason why he sent his son. His son is named yeah. Yahoo. Which is what? Your whore is what? Salvation. So he's the one to come, right? He's the one that's going to bring us rest. 
You're going to be like Noah, because in the midst of a destruction or a calamity, he's going to what? Purge us. He's going to we're going to come into his house, right, and be counted amongst them. And then we what? Rule in the midst of the earth. We become kings and priests. We become the ones who are, who are the oracles of Yahuwah, or hold the words of Yahuwah in the aftermath of the great calamity. <laughs> You understand? So, I mean, I wanted to read some other scriptures, but I mean, it's kind of, you know, Isaiah, you get a chance, Jeremiah 50, 51. Read about all the stuff Yahuwah said he's going to do. It's why. And then now we see all the things coming, um, coming to pass. Even this stuff about, and um, even this stuff in Daniel, he talks about the king of the north and the king of the south. Right? Uh, he's going to bring a king from the north that's going to come against Babylon. And he's going to bring a king um, from, the, uh, from the south that's going to come against Babylon. And then there's going to be trouble. And he talks about all other nations that align themselves with, with him. Now, I'll tell you another thing. Zechariah. Zechariah talks about yeah. um, Babylon falling. He starts talking about how there's these four horns, these four main countries that scatter the people. Then he says he sees four carpenters. So right. the wild thing is that we look up the word carpenter, that word we trace is brick maker. Mm. Or somebody that laid bricks. <laughs> so there's this thing that's going on in the world now called bricks. Uh, the British nations and the British nations are they, they hell bent to destroy the dollar and being honest everything that they already put in, into place has already been uh, destroying the country think about it a lot of the countries that's involving themselves with the British are countries that didn't necessarily lead the, co the colonization af efforts in Africa right some of them did not some of them not to a lesser point but not the major nations you're talking about like Belgium France Spain these nations like this. So, but the context is that now you see the, this consortium of nations that, that are attacking the root call, the root um, stability of this whole nation, which is the dollar. Mm -hmm. So all these things, I, would, I can get in the current events, we'd be all day. Yeah, we, ain't gonna, but, um, we ain't gonna be able to do this 5.30 now. We yeah, we gotta wrap it up. Y'all get, get a picture right. So salvation is what? Right, so who brings us salvation? Yahushua. It's Yahushua. Matter of fact, if you go look in the Old Testament, you even see that word translated as Yahushua sometimes. They say salvation, and you look, you see the word, it be the word Yahushua. So we know that it's always been him, and it will forever be him, even going into the, into the future. So, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, praise Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, praise Yahushua, how he's going to come.